Welcome to the 5th Annual Atari Homebrew Awards, celebrating the best in Atari Homebrew. The Atari Homebrew Awards are brought to you by... Atari Age, the largest publisher of new homebrew games for Atari systems. Argon, play games you love on the devices you already own. And Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games. Welcome to the fifth annual Atari Homebrew Awards. Let us know if there's any video or audio problems. Because <laughs> there might be. Um, yes, welcome. Oh my god, it's five years already. Let's all step forward just a little bit. There we go. Uh, yeah, this is the big event where we find out what you voted for. Cats. Nope. Cats already nope, no cats. attaching everything. Right, cats are already on it. We do have two cats here. <laughs> This is Sprite, yes. and the other cat is Atari. I'm sure you'll see him in a oh, moment. No, oh, no, 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 no. So we're going to run through, I uh, can't <laughs> believe it, we've added more categories this year, including Jaguar yes. new this year. Yeah. So we have a total of 22 categories. Mm -hmm. uh, unbelievable. That's oh. twice as many as if you had 11 categories. It is. Good mm -hmm. observation. Mm -hmm. Very astute. Yep. Um, so we have categories for 2,600. Oh, so far so good. Awesome. Uh, 2600, 5200, 7800, Lynx, 8-bit uh, computer, and Jaguar. So we're covering everything mm -hmm. except ST. Um, oh, actually, this could be a lot closer, couldn't it? Could be. Are you okay? Didn't uh, really pay attention to microphone. Let's get this closer. Oh, too close. Not that close. Too close. Now they know there's a microphone. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> The surprise is revealed. <laughs> there was a microphone all along. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my name is James Earl O'Brien. This is Tanya O'Brien and then at Darcy Troy O'Brien. Darcy O'Brien. <laughs> We're all one big happy family That's here. That's right. <laughs> and thank you uh, for tuning in to find out uh, who the winners are. Uh, we've gone through this huge process of whittling down all the huge amounts of homebrew released in 2022. Let me just give you some numbers here. Uh, there were 10, these are eligible games. Uh, let's see, is there a total here? I think it was 365, coincidentally. Wow. Homebrew, eligible homebrews for the Atari Homebrew So one a day year. for the one whole a year. Day. Wow. wow. That's adding up all of the different um, platforms. Mm which is a huge output. Mm -hmm. So they break down uh, 10 Lynx games, 45 7800 games, 67 8-bit 5200 games, 89 7800 games, mm -hmm. and 129 2600 games. Huge amounts of new games. Who said these consoles were dead? <laughs> You're crazy. Some of them are dead. Uh, yeah. But you could fix them if you find the parts. And, That's uh, right. And have the know-how. Yep. Have the right chips. Soldering gun. Yeah. And the right chips. And the right yep. chips. Um, so we've expanded the 7800 categories into original and ports. There nice. was such a boom yeah. in 7800 games this past year, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Such a great machine. Um, and let's see. Oh, no. This is old information. That's no good. That's probably <laughs> old information. Oh no. Yeah. Well, it's on paper. They those things go out of date so easily, That's right? That's true. They do. That's right. They're not updated. Uh, yeah, if you manually update them, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> we can find a pen. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank the sponsors, mm -hmm. of course. Uh, Zero Page Homebrew. Those great people over at that awesome <laughs> streaming uh, I like platform. them. I they're, like pretty them. they're pretty you good. You know, they bring uh, the latest homebrew to you and play them adequately. Yes. <laughs> From that terribly right. to very well. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the whole some in between. range yeah. in between. Yeah. That's right. Uh, I don't know the whole range, but definitely somewhere. <laughs> some in, of the, range. <laughs> the somewhere in between, that's Tanya. <laughs> that's right. And I play it. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm, 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 I'm uh, no, yeah. Darcy, yeah. I, I think I think I'm below you. <laughs> oh, no. Depends on they the know. game. Depends they on the know. game. Depends Tanya mops the floor with puzzle games. I do like. I the can't puzzle do games. the puzzle games. Everybody has their own stuff. Everyone has this stuff. And the cats are great at ringing bells. Yes. Yeah, for treats. Yes. Yeah. Treat time. Uh, I think if you gave me a chance, though, 
I think you'd be okay. Sprayed. I yeah. think I could oh, eat, really? Only eat Sprite. Sprite is oh, good. I don't Do I have know. to eat the treat? Like Atari's only beat. Well, yes, you have to eat the treat. Okay, well, you get I the take next it back. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Atari's only beaten Sprite once. Once. So I'm surprised that he beat him ever. Yeah. Point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised too. It, there was a little interference from the well, uh, from the judges. I do make throwing... I do make Sprite run a little bit further for his uh, treats because he is incredibly fast. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he doesn't chew, yeah. and he doesn't chew. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is cheating. He really. swallows whole. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I want to also thank Atari Age uh, for mm -hmm. sponsoring the event as well. Uh, they help uh, have a place to organize the event in the forums. Uh, we have the nomination committee there. We have the polls there for voting on the Atari Homebrew Awards. That cap may bring down the green screen. There's no green screen. Forget I what mean, he said. I mean, there's a big LED panel in behind us. Yeah. Uh, and I also want to thank the team over at Argon uh, for uh, sponsoring the event as well. Um, they hosted all the nominated games on their platform so people could play them and evaluate them nice. before voting, which was great. Yeah. Um, and we'll be talking with Al and uh, Al from Atari Age and uh, Argon later in the show. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else. Uh, I want to thank the nomination committee as well. Nice. The dozens and dozens of people there yeah. who had to go through all of the games, what? all 365 games, and narrow it down. What a hardship, having to pay, play 365 oh, it's games. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. But it is, it is a lot of work. <laughs> it is a lot of work. It is a lot of games to play. It's a lot of games. And a lot of to time. judge them. A lot of time. It is. It's not that it's hard to play the games, but the time involved. The time. Yeah. But the games are yeah. fun. Um, and uh, also the hundreds uh, in the Atari community. Mm -hmm. for turning out and voting on all these That's games because awesome. the nomination committee narrows it down to six in each category okay so you guys don't have to go through 365 games mm -hmm. and uh, then the people vote on the six and they pick their favorite and that's what we're going to reveal tonight Very their nice. favorites yeah and of course a thank you to all the incredible developers who made all these games the amount of work they put into this is absolutely astounding mm -hmm. it's, it's and huge. thank you to all the Almost incredible developers. <laughs> almost. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because you'll get there. Keep Yo. going. Keep going. <laughs> and of course, everybody watching today, thank you for turning out yeah. and uh, to find out uh, all the nominees. And, and supporting and the, the nominees. Yes, and, and playing their supporting games. supporting the show. And buying the games yes. as well. It keeps the community going. So. It does, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, so we're going to be taking a look at the work in progress games first. This yeah. is the games that are being developed. They're not done yet. They're mm -hmm. at some stage in the process, the beginning, middle, near the end, some of them. Uh, do you want to, before you jump into yes. that, uh, we have uh, someone helping us out. Oh, do you want yes. to give some credit to our... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Gio, who's on the switchboard today. Yeah. Uh, she'll come on the end, at the end and say hello to yes. everyone. Yeah. Uh, so if uh, Gio's going to be uh, queuing up all the people for talking, mm -hmm. all the winners, and uh, queuing up all the videos. And we couldn't do it without her. Uh, absolutely not. Absolutely it would be chaos. <laughs> it would be very hard, very difficult. Very, so, very grateful for her help. Yeah, it's awesome that yeah. Gio is helping out today. So the yes. first... Uh, category mm -hmm. is Atari 2600 a best homebrew best work in progress original so let's see the nominees Atari 2600 work in progress original Dark Keep by Edward Smith and Kevin Mosley graphics Game of the Bear, Too Much to Bear, by VHZC Games, Vladimir Zuniga. Linemen, by Grocer Games, Kevin Kelly. Lord of Biscay by Marco Johannes and Dyfed Hitchings Manual. Refractor by Dave Christensen.
Pantheon 2 by Mike Indovina. Let's see the runners up and the winners. Open the envelope. The red envelope. <laughs> the sealed envelope. <laughs> Sorry, that was supposed to be a paper cut, but it didn't really happen. I gotta go back to mime school. <laughs> so so uh, for the Atari 2600 Best Work in Pro Progress Original, in third place, Lord of Biscay by Mario Johan. Ioannis. Ioannis and... Dyfed Hitchings. Hitchings. For the manual. For the manual. Uh, second place. <laughs> Dark Keep by Edward Smith and Kevin Mosley. Graphics. And the winner is Game of the Bear 2. Much, too Much to Bear. 32K by... 32K. It's too late already. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> by Aviation Team Games, Vladimir Zanega. Vladimir Zuniga! Welcome, Vladimir. Congratulations. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes. it's all good. Uh, hi, hi, everyone. Uh, oh, my, my English is not too good, so I prepared some notes that I want to read to receive the, this award. Uh, First of all, I want to thank very much to all the people that like them both for this new adventure of Ursula the Bear. Uh, I'm very happy with the award, the second one for the Game of the Bear series, because in the fourth one, uh, I uh, the first Game of the Bear won uh, the best um, original in the previous uh, version. Uh, and I just a year or so ago, ago, when the first game of the bird uh, won the award for the best original game brew, game, homebrew for uh, 2300, I mentioned it in the writing, uh, writing statement that I sent to James that it was probably my favorite game of all that I have programmed since the 2018. That, that was when I started in homebrew scene. Uh, now I can see I feel the same way about the sequels, and I'm really glad that uh, with the fact that people apparently like the series too, to uh, to the extent to gave another another hour. So thank you uh, very much, everyone, especially to James and Zero Page Homebrew team for the time and effort to organize organizing the hours and. If you like uh, this game and Ursula Adventure in general, you can check the sequel for the uh, 7800 uh, and, and say in the previous uh, hour, uh, wait for more sequels. Uh, Excellent. Thank you so much, Vladimir, and congratulations. It's congratulations. a super fun game. It's Always game. Yeah, enjoy yeah. playing your games and, of course, Platformers are my uh, one of my favorite genres, so you always come through on those. So thank you so much, and congratulations again. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, congratulations, Vladimir. Oh, no, no, we send those to the winner. <laughs> Not to the cats. Oh, uh, there you go. Uh, so, uh, speaking of the awards, uh, this is uh, the newly designed award for this year. Uh, you can see uh, it has swoops on the side and swoops, a little bar non, non in the middle. Swoops. And uh, it's a prototype. Just it's so just a aware. prototype. <laughs> and uh, it has a H for homebrew and Atari homebrew. Let's see. Atari homebrew awards. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> kind of works out. It and uh, yeah, great. Tanya's uh, pouring these and making these so we can actually customize them this year with the winner's name. So that is really, really exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so the next category is Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Port. 
And so let's see the nominees for that. Atari 2600 Work in Progress Port 2600 Words by Carl Garrison Bomb Jack by Nick Sherman Boom! by Chris Walton Programming Nathan Strum Graphics Elevator Agent by Champ Games John Champeau, Coding and Design Nathan Strum, Art and Graphics Pat Brady, Music and Sounds Space Taxi by Jeff Haber Top and Tom 2 by Thomas Yench. And I have the magic red envelope here, which it's I will magic. read this time. Uh, well, it's, it's magic when back. you're not looking at it. Ah. Uh, so, the uh, third place is actually a tie. Uh, Top and Tom 2 by Thomas Yench. And, and tied for third is Space Taxi by Jeff Haber. Uh, second place, Boom by Chris Walton uh, for programming and Nathan Strum for graphics. And the winner of Atari 2600 Best Work in Progress Port is Elevator Agent by Champ Games. John Champo, Coding Design, Nathan Strum, Art and Graphics, and Pat Brady, Music and Sound. <laughs> and we have John Champo on the line. Welcome, John. Hey, how's it going, James? Oh, good. No mess ups so far. There's no audio <laughs> issues. There's no video issues. I'm, I'm so happy. <laughs> and uh, yes, believe that's me, how that's how it. it makes me. Oh, that's how I jinx Don't it. Okay. Jinx it. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, John. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, the show has been pretty smooth so far, so I'll, I'll try to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this was, this was actually quite a surprise. Um, this was a very competitive uh, um category and uh congratulations to all the other uh nominees as well i mean uh, i think the uh the bar for 2600 games is really uh ramping up and uh i think oh, yeah. the uh, number of uh, quality titles this year really speaks to that so thanks to everyone for that and uh certainly uh you're making it tough on me um are you pushing <laughs> me to, to make these games as, as good as possible so i appreciate it so um yeah so i'll just i have a prepared speech <laughs> no, no, it's not really prepared. But uh, like um, to thank yeah, the so academy. Wanna, uh... <laughs> yes, exactly. I want to thank. Um, yeah, first I want to start off by thanking um, the people that actually worked on the game. So I'll thank myself, um, and then we'll move <laughs> on. To, uh, we'll move on to a uh, uh, Nathan Strum, as everyone probably knows by now. Uh, he's uh, he's basically worked on uh, every game that Champion has ever released. Uh, certainly, at least the graphics, and I mean, you see. Um, Pulls uh, some other, uh, puts on some other hats for uh, other um, tasks, whether it's sound in uh, Turbo or the speech in um, in Gorf. So he's uh, he's always contributing, and he's also uh, plays a, a very important part in the design of these games as well. So first, first off, I want to thank Nathan, of course, and um, second, I'd like to thank um, Pat Brady, who uh, graciously offered to uh, do the sound and music for this, which. Um, it's coming along amazing. Um, so I wanted to thank him for that. Um, it's been great working with him. Um, we actually are working. Uh, he, he codes too, which is great. So uh, he's coding the driver and uh, providing the data for the sound and graphics. So it's, it's been a huge uh, help uh, with the development of this game. So thank you, Pat. Um, I also want to thank the uh, CDF team. 
Um, for the people that don't know that is, that's Chris, Daryl, and Fred. Um, certainly the development of the uh, tools and the, uh, um, whatever, just uh, the tools and uh, the Harmony car and uh, the uh, CDF driver, CDFJ driver as well, um, makes these games even possible. Um, certainly games that wouldn't have been possible 40 years ago. So thanks to them for always uh, upping the ante as far as what can be done and uh, allowing me to uh, to use those tools to make these games. So thanks to them. Um, I'd also thank the Stella team. Of course, without them, I uh, wouldn't be able to actually write these games and test them. So that's uh, certainly a shout-out to Steven, um, who actually uh, runs the Stella team and I've worked with TJ as well. He does a ton of work on, on Stella, as, and we work closely to add support for these uh, advanced features. So thanks to them. I also want to do a shout out to Steve, um, who's a uh, Jet Set Illy, um, who uh, is the uh, author of Gopher 2600. Worked with him as well. Um, and he's had some, added some really amazing features to that that help with uh, debugging. So I'm not pulling out what's left of my hair trying to find a bug. Uh, he's uh, he, he's saving saving what, what's left so far. So, <laughs> um, and then lastly, well, maybe not lastly, but certainly I want to thank you, James, and the Zero Page Homebrew team for these uh, awards. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, always nice to have the uh, community to come together for these type of things, whether it's this or Atari each day, or even just the, the weekly shows that you do that really keep uh, and boost the interest on, on this, and you know, um, help help us developers uh, um, inspire us to, to do these type of things. So that's always appreciated. So and last but not least, I got to thank my good buddy, Al. Um, <laughs> as we all know, Al runs Atari Age. Um, that's where all this kind of started. It's kind of brought us all together as a community as well. And certainly all the work that he does to uh, release these games to, uh, to the community. Um, you know, he, as we know, he's always working on something and uh, he puts in a lot of hours for for the sake of us developers and certainly the people that have played the Atari. So I want to thank him as well. And that's it. Hopefully I didn't run over my time. And Yeah, uh, I, I almost started the playing off music, but you're yeah, that close. Yeah, I thought now. I heard something. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's always uh, enjoyable to premiere and play your games on the show. Uh, they always astound and amaze me. Each one that you release, it just tops the last one and you make the impossible possible. Um, so great job yet again, John. Well, thanks, James. And I, I, I do want to mention quickly, as far as um, people are interested about when Elevator Agent may be available, we are. Uh, if uh, Al can pull together a uh, mid um, 2023 release of games, um, we're hoping to get it released then. If not, it'll probably be in uh, um, October at the uh, Portland Retro Game Expo, and and after that. So, excellent. Can't wait. That's it. Well, thank okay, you so great. much, John, and congratulations again. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. I love how our, our mini selves are looking the correct way. Yeah. It was totally coincidence which uh, side I put us on. And it's like we're looking over there and we're looking up. It's so good. Yeah. Um, so the next uh, category, uh, we're moving over to 7800, Atari 7800. And we're going to be looking at the nominees for Best Work in Progress Original. So let's take a look at those. Atari 7800 Work in Progress Original. Bernie and the Tower of Doom by Muddy Vision, Lewis Hill. Game of the Bear, Polar Opposites by VHZC Games, Vladimir Zuniga. Harpy's Curse by Todd Fermansky. Legend of Silver Peak by Steve Engelhart. Uzi the Goo Gaiden 
by VHZC Games. Tunnels of Hyperion by VHZC Games. You've got the envelope. Oh my god. <laughs> Off run. Rip. Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Original. In third place, Harpy's Curse by Todd Fermansky. In second place, Game of the Bear Polar Opposites by VHZC Games, Vladimir Zuniga. Winner, Bernie and the Tower of Doom by Muddy Vision Lewis Hill. And we have Lewis Hill on the line. Hello, Ooh. Lewis. Welcome and congratulations. Hey, James. How you doing? Very good. How are you doing? Good stuff. Yeah, good. Thank you. Um, wow. <laughs> what can I say? Um, a huge thank you for everyone that, that got involved in the voting and, and voted for Bernie and the Tower of Doom. Um, this project came about really, I wanted to try and uh, do something a little bit different to what I've been doing already. I wanted to try a, a little puzzle game. Um, so I put Bernie together as a bit of a test and, um, you know, folks have liked it so far. The feedback's been good. Um, and I have to be, do a big shout out to uh, to Jesse and to Robert and to Steve, who've been doing a lot of testing on the on the on the work in progress binary. Uh, have been helping me find bugs, um, and also to Dave Hughes for some additional graphics and help with level design. Um, big shout out as well, I think, to um, to Mike Sarner and to Matt Smith, whose tools have really enabled the 7800 um, homebrew scene to really explode um, and to really take off. There's been so many um, quality um, projects that have come in through, and you know. In this category alone, I think any one of the, the, the nominated games would have made a worthy winner. There, there's so many good games. Um, I can imagine the, um, the, the the challenge people have had, you know, picking a winner out of so many good ones. It's, you know, uh, so many authors producing so much good quality stuff at the moment. Oh, yeah. The, the, the 7800 has come into its own in the past couple of years, uh, uh, thanks to uh, developers like you and and uh, the tools that are available. I think it just makes a huge difference, the tools that are available. Absolutely. And, and you know, having Al at Atari Age supporting the homebrew community, getting stuff published and and yourself, James, with the and the team for the stream and getting stuff out into the into the public domain and, you know, getting the uh, getting people to see the games that are being played and trying them out on, on your uh, on the show is fantastic as well um, you know it's uh, and, and the 7800 community there's lots of folks in there that that, that you know they're, they're testing these ROMs and they're uh, you know putting suggestions forward and it's uh, you know it, it, it's such a such a great place uh, so congratulations again uh, great work on uh, the cute mascot that you've got going, Bernie, and I can't wait to see his further adventures uh, in other games as well. And uh, and uh, yep. looking forward to this one being uh, completed in the future. Yeah, we, I'm shooting for the end towards the end of the year, probably sometime in Q3 or early Q4. We should be done with Bernie, so yeah, all good. Excellent. So congratulations and uh, thanks for making the game and thanks for coming on. Thank you. Bye-bye. The next category is Atari 7800 Best Work in Progress Port. Now, so let's take a look at the nominees uh, for that. Atari 7800 Work in Progress Port. RT by Muddy Vision, Lewis Hill, Coding and Graphics, Bobby Clark, Mike Sarna, Code Guru, Matt Smith, Music Help. Canon in D, D for Defense, by VHZC Games, Vladimir Zuniga. Lunar Patrol by Old Style. Pac-Man 
Pac-Man Energy Drink Edition by Bob DeCrescenzo. Plum Luck DX by Blake Smith. And who's got the red envelope? Is it my turn or your turn? My Tanya's turn. turn. Okay, let's see who the winner and runners up are. All right, so starting in third place, we have Pac Man Energy Drink Edition by Bob DeCrescenzo. Second, second place, Lunar Patrol by Old Style. And in first place, we have Artie by Muddy Vision. Lewis Hill, Coding and Graphics, Bobby Clark, Mike Sarna, The Code Guru, and Matt Smith for Music Help. Woohoo! Congratulations! So let's bring Lewis back. Hello, Lewis. Congratulations <laughs> once again. Back to back wins. Oh my yeah, goodness. It, it's been a while since we spoke, James. Probably at least three minutes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, a little while. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just want to say again a huge thank you to everybody involved with the project. Um, you know, um, Steve, Jesse, and Robert, my three musketeers, always finding bugs and giving me more grey hairs. Mike and Matt for their support. <laughs> Matt's helped her getting the sound that Bobby's produced, all the all the the fantastic tunes. Although only one tune is in the demo. There's there's some more tunes done for the other zones, and Bobby's done an absolutely awesome job. He really does make Pokey sing, uh, and mm. Mike's always uh, a font of knowledge. You know, he's Mike, Mike. You've got a question. There's, there's something weird you can't get your head around. Michael break it down for you into 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 you know terms that you can you can understand and you can apply. He, he's super helpful. Um, Artie really came about as as a well, I did I, I did Keystone Coppers and I really enjoyed um, that port. Ports were never really my thing, and I thought, well, you know. What was my second favorite game on the 2600? Well, it was Hero, and I thought, well, maybe we can we can do another. Um, perhaps port's the wrong word. Perhaps um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's oh um, yeah, m more of a kind of um, you know like a like a, a, a modern variation. You know, we update the graphics, update the sound, put a bit of story behind it, um, and, and and that's where that's where Artie came from. And I thought I got the idea to do different different themed areas. Um, I think the, um, the the kind of South American Mayan Egyptian. Uh, um, uh, Inca level is the one that's in the demo. We've got the Egyptian one that's coming soon, and then there's a uh, an unannounced third one. But it's um, it was really from my, my love of Hero, and I, there was a few things in Hero that I didn't like with the the flying and the way there was the delay. And I, I can see you nodding there, James. I, I know oh, that you yeah. share my uh, my you dislike made the game of that. playable. Thank you so much for changing that. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but it's um, uh, RT. I think we're looking again towards the end of the year. You know alongside Bernie um, to, to get that one complete and uh, I'll have a chat with Al about how, how we bring that to the store perhaps and then uh, we're good. Just just a couple of other quick comments I wanted to make. Um, I have I have to give a shout out to Mrs. H for the um, the supply of um, sandwiches and cups of tea. Um, they're absolutely key to the uh, development process. Without them, I don't know where oh. we'd be. And if I don't shout them out, I'm going to get a kick in later. So I have to say that. <laughs> no tea um, for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no more tea, no more butties. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And um, again, the sponsors, you know, it, it's so great that these these events can be put on every year, um, you know, and, and, you know, just putting them on. I know there's an, it's a monumental effort that goes into them. Um, and, and that's it, really. Yeah. Um, EXO, we, uh, we're looking to get that in the store in the spring, just to, just as a quick shout out for that one. I know I've had a lot of people reaching out and asking about that when it will be available. Um, I, Al and I are working on getting that together, probably going to be in the May time frame. So um, there we are with that as well. So all good. Excellent. So many great Muddy Vision games coming out. They're all amazing. Uh, I love the, playing your games on the show. Mm -hmm. So much fun. So congratulations again. <laughs> and, thank you. Uh, and thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me, James. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. And uh, next up, we're actually going to talk to one of the sponsors. Speaking of uh, thanking the sponsors, okay. it's going to be Al from Atari Age, uh, who just kind of is runs the central hub 
of everything that everybody does here and talks about because of the forums. It's a magic gathering place. That's right. Where everybody can come to mm -hmm. and discuss games and test games and develop games yeah. and share ideas. And uh, we're going to talk to Al. In a second. In one second. Yeah. That, that black line is bugging the hell out of me. What black line? I, I, the, 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 oh, uh, on the, on the, ah. on the, I'm going to change it in the next it's one. It's fine. Okay. Let's talk to, <laughs> let's talk to Al. <laughs> Hello, Hello, Al. Welcome Hello. to the Atari How Awards. Fifth one. I can't believe it's already five. And you've been there since the beginning. <laughs> sponsoring yeah, the crazy. event and helping out with the event and and being the place where we plan the event so thank you so much once again you're welcome and thank you obviously for all the effort you put into it i mean you do 99 percent of the work i just have to host, <laughs> up, the, host the voting and you know talk to you on the stream and you know and help publish games but you know uh, you know, oh, so don't it's, it's don't put yourself down there's there's so much work <laughs> that you do and I know. people do I mean, I'm recognize it working on games right now Oh, there so you go. I'll, I'll be doing that all day while I'm talking to you or watching the stream as well. It's going to yep. be never ending for the next month. Burning, soldering, piecing together yeah. things. You st still cleaning yeah. off combat carts, soaking them in water, and uh, that's a complicated. Well, it's not that complicated. <laughs> so I can. I'm using new shells for uh, everything except the melody games at the moment because those Excellent. shells. They're not shells I made. I got them from a third party. Uh, yeah. And they don't those the, the melody and area boards uh, rattle more in those shells, so I don't want to use them because if you insert them into a system, the board uh, may not align properly with the opening and the dust cover. Uh, yeah. So for those games, yes, I'm recycling, but I will have a new shell pretty soon. Uh, awesome. I just need to send the the, the mold manufacturer uh, a bunch of boards uh, that they can use to test the design, uh, and then you know while they're working on the mold, but hopefully soon. Hopefully by probably not by May, but by the time PRG comes around, it should be new shells for everything. And I'm already Sweet. using new shells for 5200, 7800, Jaguar, uh, and Lynx. I have uh, 2,000 brand new Lynx shells, and we'll have the first Lynx game hopefully in the store in May as well. Wow, uh, that's or awesome. Or actually two games, and then you know once that's going, it'll be a lot easier to publish future Lynx games. Yeah, Mark Rianna says, I imagine Al in this room at all times. Is that pretty much <laughs> accurate? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is just one of three rooms up here that has Atari, Atari age related stuff in it. Wow. The other two rooms. Have a ton of shelving for boxes and manuals and uh, posters and uh, the the labels and all sorts of other things. Uh, this is where all the work happens, though, as far as assembling games, soldering games, yeah. uh, shipping games, uh, and that's why you know the, the shelving that's in this room is you know like in the background and the, the top shelves over there. You can see there's tubes and tubes of chips, for instance. <laughs> there's yeah. uh, bins full of all sorts of things, mostly labeled, but they're not all labeled. So sometimes I'm hunting for things. And there's even Christmas that's the Christmas lights still on the oh, shelves in the background decorative. there. Decorative, nice. <laughs> so I do spend a lot of time in here. You know, I've got a couple monitors so I can watch, you know, listen, listen to movies, watch movies, podcasts, and things too while I'm doing this, or watch the stream or watch playbacks of the stream because I don't always get to watch the live ones. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So what's what's coming up for Atari Age in terms of? I, I know you just released a whole batch of games into the store. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. is the next one for PRGE or what's the timetable? I'm sure people are already excited for all the games that we're showing off on the show today. Yeah, so there will definitely, so as you know, typically in the last five years or so, I've been doing one big release of games that coincides with PRG. Uh, even when there was no PRG, there were still a big, you know, for 2020 <laughs> and 2021, there's still a big batch of games. Uh, so this year we're going to have a, a, several games in the, in the, in the uh, spring, uh, including Elevator Agent, even though I can understand why John might be a little pessimistic that I'll actually get another release of games out this year. Uh, <laughs> but Elevator Agent will certainly be there. And, uh, you know, the whole slate of games, not 25 games uh, like Oof, it was last yeah. year. Uh, but there will be at least 10 games uh, in, in spring. And then uh, PRG will be the next target after that because that's, you know, it's okay. always a big show to get ready for. And we should have an even larger booth. We may actually have a 45 foot by 30 foot booth this year. Wow. Uh, which is 50% larger than any booth we've done in the past. And last year was an odd size booth. It was like 21 by 34 or something like that, where we were in the, the corner. It was an odd location for us, too. But yeah. that was the only way we could get an even bigger booth because there was just so much demand for vendors and stuff for last year's show. So you're going to have to get uh, a anyway, bunch more so yes, 1702 should... monitors then. Yes. Yeah, I actually <laughs> left a lot of stuff in Portland. I have a storage unit in Portland now where I've got a ton of those monitors. Mm. We're going to try to repair a whole bunch also, so I have ah, even good. more for this year. I probably have 
20 1702s that weren't at the show that need tap kits or have other problems mm -hmm. like with the dials or the connectors in the back or the front things like that relatively easy fixes uh, okay. But just it is time consuming to go through them without electric, you know, electrocuting yourself and working on them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and then, of yeah. course, all the systems. I have a ton of systems. I'll probably get, have even more modified. Uh, yeah. Jesse Hardesty did a whole bunch for us last year, Crossbow on the forum. Uh, he does a fantastic job doing the AV oh, mods. Yeah. And those those systems all have you know, S-Video, the uh, split chroma and luminance connectors for, the, for those 1702s, composite video, and then the stereo audio outputs. Uh, so it's a lot of work, and that's just 2650, 200, and the 700. It's all are modified like that for use with those monitors. Since you're releasing links, are you going to get modded links to output? Or? I do. I, I already have. I already have two modified Links 2 systems. So yes, nice. there will be Link systems set up at the show, and I can. And the Links 2s have those uh, little metal connectors or metal things in the back that I can actually <laughs> fasten them to the tables, uh, so they don't walk. So they off. don't walk away, right? Yes. I mean, that doesn't stop someone from taking the game cartridges, of course, but thank thankfully, <laughs> well, yeah. that's only happened once ever, you know, wow. in the, you know, 20 years been going to shows, at least as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> True. But it's definitely one game. Uh, but so people are pretty good about that. So I'm not really worried about that. But the Lynx is definitely a very yeah. pocketable system uh, yeah. you know, compared to everything else. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, thank you once again for sponsoring the Atari Homebrew Awards. Uh, you make my life a lot easier. Uh, having the facilities of the Atari Age forums uh, for the nomination committee and for the voting and um, just everything you do in general is is just absolutely amazing. Uh, and uh, eventually you're going to have to get a helper or something <laughs> to alleviate yes, your load so you can go on vacation again. <laughs> yes, that's yeah, that's absolutely something I need to look into. Uh, and, you know that you know as and there are other things too that that will reduce the amount of time I have to spend building games, but it's still. An incredible amount of work to build games, ship games, and then you know keep on tap of the forums. Like I have to upgrade the forum next week, the latest version. Uh, the store needs a major upgrade. I'll, once I get caught up in these orders, I'll be working basically full time and maybe take the store down for a month just to focus on getting completely new software up in that store. And at that point, we'll also be able to start uh, 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 allowing or having digital downloads for people because I get asked more and more frequently, yes. uh, you know, how people can buy games. And obviously, John, uh, you know, Champ Games is already doing that. And some yep. other homebrew, homebrew authors, but definitely want to have the option for people to do that right in the store. Uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of work, and that's why I'm only going to do two releases of games this year instead of three, as I was <laughs> hoping to initially do. But two will still be a big jump up from just one. Yes. So, yeah. But thank you for the kind words. And, again, for all the work you guys do. And, of course, the, just the incredibly talented community who, who continues to, to produce just absolutely amazing games with amazing artwork you know, for the, the packaging and designs for all that. Uh, you know, people doing the sound and music and pixel art. Uh, I mean, it really just is, is amazing. And, you know, other authors who contribute, you know, it's not just one person doing the programming for a lot of these times, there's other people contribute. Uh, and, you know, and and having the, the forum where, where everyone can work together on the project is, is a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So thank you for coming on and thank you for sponsoring for the fifth time the Atari Homebrew Awards. And uh, we will see you online. And at PRG. And a PRG, <laughs> definitely. We'll see you there. All right. Okay. Bye, Al. Thank All right, you. Have fun. Yep. So uh, the next category Ooh. up is Atari 8-bit slash 5200 best work in progress. Let's see the nominees. Atari 8-bit and 5200 work in progress homebrew. Dark Keep by Vladimir Yankovic. Ki Samui by Christian Valchik. Last Ninja 2 by Jakub Husak, Code, Michał Szyplowski, Music, Adam Wachowski, Fonts and Graphic Advice. La Baie des Morts, by Fantomas, Programming, Konstantinos Giamalidis, Graphics, Bobby Clark, Music. Tony, by Kushistov Dodek and Rafał Habowski, Code, Rafał Dodek, Graphics, Michał Bozitski, 
sound. Tracks by Janusz Hbowski and Jarek Wyszynski character artwork. And I have the envelope with the third, second, and first place. Then third place for Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Work in Progress. Uh, Last Ninja 2 by uh, Jakob Husak. Oh, there's no pronunciation there. Uh, uh, for code, Michał Spilowski uh, and Adam uh, Vahovsky for fonts and graphic advice. And for second place, we have a tie. Uh, first tie is Dark Keep by Vladimir Yankovic. And tying for their second is Tracks by Janusz Szabowski and Jarek Wyszynski uh, for character artwork. And the winner is... You say it because somebody... Uh, uh, <laughs> La Baie des Morts. Excellent! By Phantomas for programming on Konstantinos uh, Giamaldis for graphics and Bobby Clark for music. Congratulations! Congratulations! And I believe I have a written acceptance speech. You can take that. This is from uh, Bobby Clark, who did the music for the game. Uh, it was a real honor to work on this game and have it get recognition. Uh, TIX and Phantomos have really put together something special, and I enjoyed putting music to this. Can't wait to see this finally released, and it's going to be something special. We've waited a long time for an Atari 8 a uh, bit version of ADM, and I think it stacks up really well with the other platforms. Again, thanks for the recognition, and we're all very excited. Now onward and upward. Well, thank you very much, Bobby Clark, for those words. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good job. Great job. So we're going to move next on to uh, Atari Lynx. Uh, best work in progress. Continuing on with work in progress, here are the nominees. Atari Lynx Work in Progress Captain Harlynx by Fabienne Marlier Chase by Osio Team, Mars, Miao Szyplowski, Music, Kizaks Microvaders by Carl Forehand. Odinexis by Alex Hizza and Alexander Grade, created by Drozerix Music and Michał Szyplowski Music Adaption. Sorrow by Jasper Van Turnout. Exophrenin graphics, side effects, music, and sound effects. Wizzy by Carrie Kaxinen. All right, so. What's in the envelope? I have the red envelope. So, for Atari Lynx, best work in progress. In third place, we have Microvaders by Carl Foran. And then in second place, we have Captain Harlynx by Fabian Marlier. And the winner, Odinexis by Alex Hizza and Alexander Grade. Drozerix for music, and Michał Szyplowski for the music adaption. Congratulations! Congratulations. And uh, we actually have a pre-recorded uh, speech from Alex Hizza for accepting the award. Let's take a look at that. Hello everyone, or hey, as we say here in cold Sweden. 
Uh, I'm Alex, uh, aka Lord Kraken on Atari Age. I'm one of the maker of Odinexus, uh, together with uh, Enderlex and Miker. Uh, Enderlex uh, was in charge of uh, everything art, uh, from concept art to pixel art. Miker uh, was in charge of porting fantastic music from, from musician Drosorix to the links. And as for myself, I was mostly doing the programming. The game was initially planned to be released last year, um, but life happened. I got a baby girl, so everything got postponed. Uh, but I think now we're good. Uh, for the past three, four months, we have been working pretty hard, uh, polishing the games, testing it, balancing it. Uh, and now we are really close to the finish line. Uh, and on top of that, I'm super pleased to announce that uh, later this year, uh, in a few months, uh, so soon, the game will be released uh, uh, and published by Atari Age. We are actually working hard on the fantastic packaging. I think you're gonna like it. Uh, so please stay tuned, uh, more news in, in the coming months. Apart from that, um, I just want to say that we are very humble, deeply honored to receive this award. The competition was fierce this year and I can imagine that games like Microvaders or Captain Harlock uh, would have made fantastic winners. So again, thanks a lot to all of you. Thanks a lot to the participants and thanks to the Atari Lynx scene, which is a fantastic scene with great people. Uh, it's a lot of fun to be with you, uh, to talk to you on almost on a daily basis. Um, so yeah, again, we are deeply honored. Thanks a lot. Regarding other projects, uh, Anders is working, uh, as you probably already know, on Jumping at Shadow for the Atari Jaguar. If you haven't checked the game, uh, please have a look. There is even a demo. Uh, it looks fantastic, uh, super promising game. Um, yeah. And as for me, um, I'm probably gonna, going to resume my work on uh, this little game called Red. Uh, Red was a game uh, released two years ago uh, at uh, Atari Gamer Jam, Lynx Jam, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but since then, I've been adding a shitload of feature. Um, uh, sorry, I'm French. I'm throwing a lot. Um, and yeah, I think it's you're gonna like it. Uh, more info soon as well on Atari H. Um, but for now, um, I would like to uh, thank the organizer. Um, that's a great, great initiative. I would like to thank all of you guys. Uh, at a refund from the world. Um, yeah, it's a great journey and it's not over. Au revoir. Congratulations to Alex. And uh, he said that it's going to be released through Atari Age. Oh, so it's nice. going to be one of the first Atari Lynx nice. being sold on Atari Age. That's so awesome. that's, that's very exciting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the next category we're going to be going to is Atari Jaguar, which we just added this year. Yes. The category of Jaguar. Very cool. So uh, very fun. we will take a look at the nominees for Atari Jaguar Best Work in Progress. Here they are. Atari Jaguar Work in Progress Hammer of the Gods by Alexander von Noring Programming Eternal Krauser CGI, Animation, Graphic Design, Music and Sound Effects Jalaga by Eric Desert Mix slash Dune Design and Graphics Shadow Kingdom by Alexander von Noren, Game Design, Carlos Sabers, Graphics, Eternal Krauser, Music and Sound Effects, Arcadia, Story. Jumping at Shadows by Reboot, Lawrence Stavely, Code, Alexander Lex, Level Design, Art and Art Direction, Eric De45, Sound Engine, Ander Lex and Shadi Art, Artwork, Rold Strauss, Music. Splatter Hell by Alexander von Noring, Programming and Game Design. Eternal Krauser, CGI, Animation, Graphic Design, Game Design, Music and Sound Effects. 
Wyvern Tales 2 by Jasper Van Turnout. Lead story and art, Alexander Von Noring, programming, Eternal Krauser, music and art. We have a winner uh, in third place for Atari Jaguar Best Work in Progress. Uh, Hammer of the Gods by Alexander Von Noring for programming, Eternal Krauser, CGI animation, graphic design, music, and sound effects. In second place, we have a tie. Uh, first tie is Jalaga by Ezer Eric Desert, uh, Mike Slash Dune <laughs> for designing graphics. And uh, the tie for second place is with Wyvern Tales 2 by Jasper Von Turnout for lead, story, and art. Uh, Alexander Vor uh, Von Noring for programming and Eternal Krauser for music and art. And the winner is Jumping at Shadows by Reboot. Uh, Lauren Stavely Code, Ander Lex, level design, art and art direction. Eric D45 Sound Engine, Ander Lex, and Sazdi Art for artwork. And Roll Strauss for music. And we have Lauren Stavely here to accept the award. Congratulations. <laughs> Welcome, Lawrence. Hi there. Good to be here. Congratulations. Great job. Thank it's you. excellent work in progress. It looks beautiful. Yeah, the graphics are just, yeah, Anders knocked the sprite work out, out of the park and we picked up the graphic sets from uh, Sazzy Art um, and he's just worked wonders with the level design. It's, it's, yeah, we went all in and just decided we were going to just go and max out the cry effects as much as we could to get uh, lighting on there. Um, what to say? I mean, like, thanks to everybody who voted for it. Uh, thanks for everybody who supports the Jaguar scene. It's a tiny scene, but everybody is just so passionate about it. It's just great. Um, it's just an honor to be here and be awarded and recognized for this work. Uh, I'd like to thank Ander, for, again, for the amazing artwork and level design. Um, and he pushes me like he won't let me go on anything. If anything slightly off, he'll argue the point until I just give in. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got, uh, once again, we've got music from Roald Strauss. He, he's a freelance music author. You, anybody can go and purchase music and get tracks from him. But uh, once again, we've used his tracks. Um, we've, uh, we're, we're gonna have a new story from Andrew Rosa. He did the story work on Gravitic Minds. Um, and um, I'd also like to thank uh, Kendall and my family for putting up with all of this nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> Again, without the cups of tea, things wouldn't happen. So I do understand what, what the previous guy just said about that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right, we need our tea. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we decided we finished Gravitic Minds, and we thought, what are we going to do next? And it was, oh, let's let's make a platform game. And uh, yeah, I, I remember distinctly saying to Ender, this this could go either way. I've never done this before. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's turned out really, really well. And th thank you for making a platformer for the Jaguar. It it's an awesome, awesome game. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's yeah, we've got a lot more coming in the final version. That demo is is just a very cut down uh, version of what what we've got planned. There's a lot more coming, and we're hoping to have it ready by the uh, start of November, round about there. Excellent. Looking forward to it. So, congratulations, Cyrano. <laughs> thank you. And uh, thank you for putting all the time and effort into uh, keeping the Jaguar scene alive and putting out amazing games. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's an honor to, to take this. And um, once again, thanks everybody for voting and enjoy the games. It was very tough this year. There was a lot of new games and yeah. it was must have been a difficult choice for everyone. And, and we're just overjoyed that, that Jump in the Shadows got, got selected. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lawrence. See you online. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs> and it's great to add uh, Jaguar to the lineup this year um, and uh, include more systems that people love to play. Um, oh, I, I switched it so that that's on top now instead of behind. It was kind of cool in behind, but yeah, on top's cool too. Uh, so all the problems are fixed now. <laughs> all of them. All, all no of them. No more problems. It's going to all break down now. I love when you say that. I know. It just jinxes it, right? I'm so, it, right? so 
<laughs> uh, and I just wanted to break in with a piece yep. of information. You can come in. No, no. Okay. Uh, well, I can. I can. Yeah, so it's not high. Uh, I, I just wanted to say it's snowing outside. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So we're Weather report, in a, update. We're snowed in. Yeah. If you're in Vancouver. Yeah, yeah. You're seeing snow out your window. Of course, a lot of the U.S. is like that right now. Yes, true. In much worse condition than ours. So yeah. stay barely safe out there. Snowing, barely yeah. snowing. It's fluffy. Sprinkle. But it does add up. Yeah. It does. And it's been it's cold fun. outside, so it's not it's going anywhere. Cold. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're going to go back to the Atari 2600 now, and we're going to uh, move out. We're done all the works in progress. Now we're on to the finished games. And the first up for Atari 2600 is uh, we're going to take a look at these small games, the 4K and under. Ah. These are the minuscule ones. The sizes that the Atari first was released with. So a lot of people like to challenge themselves by making small games, no extra RAM, no extra um, co-processor, no I don't help at all. I don't think they're trying to challenge themselves. I think they're just <laughs> betting on a time machine. Right. And they're, ah. gonna, they're getting ready to go back in time and release their That's 2022 game. That's in, right. In uh, 1977, 78, oh they're just going to walk up to Atari headquarters and go, yeah, I have a game for you. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I hope you like it. And they're like, what is what sorcery is this? Which? Which? Yeah, it won't work anyways. <laughs> Either you will change some other dimension's future or you That's will find right. that you failed to get there somehow. <laughs> so just give up. Yeah, don't do it. Yeah. You're just going to wreck everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's take a look at the nominees for Atari 2600 Best uh, Homebrew 4K and Under Original. Atari 2600 Homebrew 4K and Under Original. Legendary Spear by Dave Christensen. Pinfinger by Grocer Games, Kevin Kelly. Raptor by Andrew Polly. Spiders and Flies by Game Select, Ricardo Pim, Design, Development, Gameplay, Instruction Manual and Text, Everaldo Bonifacio, Gameplay, Solo Santiago, Illustrations and Art. Vroom by Thomas Yench and Corey Kramer, Packaging Artwork. Zero Page Homebrew The Game by Leandro Camera. I'm going to give this to you. Oh, there you go. I'm going to take it. And you're going to open it. Shh. What's in it? It's the winner. It's a white piece of paper. Atari 2600 Best Homebrew 4K and Under Original. In third place, Vroom by Thomas Yench and Corey Kramer, Packaging Artwork. Uh, in second place, Spiders and Flies by Game Select, Ricardo Pim, Design, Development, Gameplay, Instruction Manual, and Text. Everaldo Benefico, ben Benefico, sure. Gameplay. I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> Salo Santiago, Illustrations and Art. Uh, Wilson Gutierrez production. Uh, and the winner, Raptor by Andrew Polly. Woo! And we've got Andrew on the line, also known as Armscar Coder. Let's talk with him. Hello, Andrew. Congratulations hey on the win for Raptor. Thank you very much. Uh, glad to be on. Um, I think we just need to take a moment and like talk about all these nominees. You know what's out of style? is having one game get nominated. If you look at these, 
authors uh, like Lewis Hill and I think four people in this category had two games. So I think Dave Christensen and I, we have to step up our game. <laughs> um, That's right. But like, I mean, like Kev Kelly, that guy, he'll make a game out of anything. You got a hand, you got a knife. <laughs> boom, you got a game. I mean, Thomas, he's, I mean, he, Thomas, we all know he's brilliant. But I think what people forget, or maybe not forget, he's the first person, I believe, to make an eight-person game yep. for the Atari 2600. He is. So, like, all these games. I mean, Ricardo, he did Asteroids Attack. And I think Leandro has three games that got nominations <laughs> this year. And then, of course, I think uh, Dave's game, Legendary Spear, 2K, got nominated for Best Graphics. That's right, 2K. Enough said. Amazing. Enough said. So, good job, Dave. Um, just, I was honored to be with all those guys, all great games. So, it was a good group to be rubbing shoulders with. Um, you know, Raptor wouldn't be the game it became without my playtesters. And, you know, beyond looking for bugs, they helped keep me focused on my ultimate goal, which was make the game fun. Because I could be plugging around and try to make all, make sure the bits fall into the right places. <laughs> but it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, is this game fun? And they helped me do that. And I just want to give, uh, name those guys because they were very helpful. And some of these, I might not get the pronunciation right, so I for, ask for forgiveness in advance. I, I know your pain. Uh, Don't were, worry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Filippo Santaloco. I hope I got that right. Uh, David Bowen, Jason DeGuerra, Brandon Thomas, Darius Vasculis, uh, my brother, Michael Pauly, who was the only compensated playtester. He got paid in sushi. Um <laughs> uh, uh, my good friend Marty Martin. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to the uh, Missy Man. We need to get together soon, hang out. Um, all of them contributed, gave me great feedback. Uh, Darius was the one that told me to put the status bar in there. I pushed back, but he won, and I'm glad he won. Um, I need to thank some other people. Wolfgang Stubig, uh, he helped me get Raptors set up in the Plus Rom High Score Club. Um, he was very patient when I asked him very ignorant questions, so he was very gracious. I want to thank him for that. Uh, Herbie Holler, my graphic designer, for the stupendous work he did on the box and the manual and the patch. Um, he took all my ideas and executed my vision perfectly. Um, I said, oh, oh, you guys. And, uh, of course, Al. I mean, everybody in the chat is talking about it. People mention it. I, I, I forgot. I didn't know how many games. I think he says 129 2600 games this year uh, quite a few let's but, see yeah 129 but, i mean with all those games and then you see what champ games is doing and i, I don't know if everybody's seen the youtube videos andrew davy's been posting we are in the golden age of atari 2600 homebrew and it may be just the beginning and all that would not be possible if it wasn't for you guys and tanya and and al <laughs> I mean, like, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. So thanks, because you guys are what's, y'all are the lifeblood of this community. Uh, I need to give a shout out to somebody else. Um, somebody has been influential to me, uh, even though he's a thousand miles away. Um, I need to say thank you to Marco Johannes uh, for being supportive, of uh, sharing game ideas, um, just really being a swell guy. And, um, you know, he's, he's a great programmer. <clears throat> Pitcast awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but really, he's just a swell guy and, and a great friend. So thanks, Marco. Cheers to you, brother. Um, I've been you know, playing around with some different game ideas, but um, I don't have any projects going on right now. In fact, I'll probably be taking a little bit of a break from development. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to say, I, my wife and I, we used to drink these uh, drinks, Honest Teas, and um, I haven't done it in a while. Um, but... What they used to do is under the cap, they would have a six-word memoir. So a long, long, long time ago, we were sitting there savoring our teas. This is before we were kids. And um, I told her, I said, uh, I know what mine would be. And it would be, my best legacy is my children. And I just want to reiterate, my life has changed after finding or finding again the Atari 2600 but more so discovering the scene of the homebrew scene. Um, my life is never going to be the same. And I often joke with my wife that Atari is my golf. 
So on the weekends, I'm not like sneaking off to the golf course, but I'm sneaking down like to the basement to play a level of load runner. I'm like taking a scratch piece of paper. I'm drawing some sprites or checking out discussions on Atari Age. Um, so it's a passion for me, just like most people here. Um, but before I turn around, yeah, it's my kids are going to be grown up and gone. So I, I need to slow down and invest some quality time with them. Um, I also want to mention that during the later stages of rapper development, my father-in-law uh, was diagnosed with cancer, and unfortunately, sadly, he passed away this past fall. But as he was going through some things, we were foot putting the finishing touches on the manual, and uh, I decided to cheer him up a bit. On the manual cover, there's a, a yellow sticky note like from somebody, and I thought his nickname was Big Al. So I was like, oh, we're going to make it from Big Al, and he got a kick out of that. But um, you know, he was a great father, father-in-law, brother, brother-in-law, uncle, grandfather. He was just a great guy. And uh, we all miss him. And I just want to dedicate this award to him. I want to dedicate it to Big Al. So um, I'm almost done. Uh, I just want to thank everybody <laughs> for the support of Raptor. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. So thank everybody for the support of Raptor. Uh, really means a lot. When I think about it, I just smile. I just smile. I don't have words. I just smile. So I just want to let everybody know, I still have Raptor patches to give away. So send me your scores. I, I want to give these things away. And uh, thank you guys for putting on the show, having me on. It's really well done. And um, I'm glad I got through before the glitches started happening. <laughs> what? <laughs> There's going to be glitches? Oh, my God. <laughs> no, 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 no. But thanks. Yeah, thank you so much. And congratulations uh, on your uh, win. Raptor is an astounding achievement in 4K. And uh, I'm glad it got an award. So uh, thank you for coming on and congratulations, Andrew. Thanks. See ya. Bye bye. Uh, yeah, fun, fun game. Uh, I think it's a thousand points to get the patch. If you uh, keep at it, you'll definitely get it. Um, it's not, it's not easy, but it's not too hard. So definitely go for that patch since he's still got some left. Uh, Use next... up that stock. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next category, we're going to move into 2600 Music and Sounds. This is everything you hear in the game. Um, and we're going to be doing Best Music and Sound Original first for Atari 2600. So let's take a look at the nominees for that. Atari 2600 Homebrew 4K and Under Port. Apple Slayer. By July... We're not doing it anymore. Wrong one. Um, we are down to 12. No, we're well, not. No, no. Yep. No, we're not. We have, oh, we sorry. I board. announced the wrong one. You announced yeah. the wrong one. Yeah, you Gio were right. did it Gio. right. Yeah. <laughs> high five, Gio. High five. So, not yet. Not yet. Gio did it right. So, <laughs> the actual... We are doing the port of 4K and under. Uh, for 2600. So let's go to... He does so much. you got to forgive him. Every know. once in a while he makes a mistake. He's I not very often. very little sleep last night. Yeah. <laughs> Bet it two up at seven. Yeah. He'll be okay, buddy. It's okay. I'll <laughs> sleep tonight. Uh, so 2600 best homebrew 4K and under port. port. Let's take a look at the nominees. Atari 2600 homebrew 4K and under port. Apple Slayer. By July 2022, Atari Endo Class. Einvader by Owen Cooper. Invaders from Andromeda by Carmelo Cisano. It's Connor Time by Isernosoft. Is it your turn or my turn? Oh, uh, your turn. Okay, because I screwed it up. 
No, because I did it last time. <laughs> ah, that too. <laughs> uh, so, the uh, winners for Atari 2600 Best Homebrew 4Can Under Port. In third place, Apple Slayer by the July 2022 Atari Ando class. Sounds strange, but it was a class making Atari games. That's oh, why I don't have names. Cool. Uh, in second place, hopefully they find, out, find this out. Uh, in second place, uh, Invader by Owen Cooper. And uh, the winner is Invaders from Andromeda by Carmelo Cisano. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, and we have a, uh, a speech from them, a pre-recorded speech, so uh, let's uh, take a look at that. Hello, Zero Page on Brew. Hello, James. Hello, Tanya. Hello to everyone there. Thank you very much for the prize. I'm very, very happy about it. And I want to thank everyone who voted for my game. Thanks. It's a dream, one of the dreams become true. The first is being to write a game for the Atari 2600, the second win a prize, and the third I hope soon is to see one of my games on cartridge. About my game, as you know, the first is being Fulpit, the Maya Cave, the second Invaders from Andromeda, and the third is a racing game. Is still work in progress, and when it's complete, I send to you, James, and I hope to see in your great show. What can I say more? Only thanks again, take care, and ciao ciao from Italy. Ciao ciao. Congratulations, uh, great game, great um, graphics on that with the scrolling earth at the bottom. Love it. Uh, so the next category, continuing on, this is going to be the right one, um, <laughs> is uh, Atari 2600. We're going to be taking a look at the graphics next. Uh, uh, this is the original, because we divide it up into original and port. And originals are... Well, not ported. Just not ported, so let's go, <laughs> go to the port. Ports are anything that's based on something else that's a video game right. in some sort of form. Any kind of adaption or something close enough that people would recognize it as that game and they go oh that's based on that game um, you can read the exact wording that i alter every year to update and get it more and more precise defining what a port is it's very difficult in fact <laughs> um, but defining original is easy because it's not a port all you have to do is is it a port no it's original that's what we're going to look at now and this is the best graphics for atari 2600 port uh <sighs> Atari 2600 Graphics Original. Let's take a look at the nominees. Atari 2600 Graphics Original. Grizzards by Bruce Robert Pocock. Programming, manual text, in-game artwork, sound effects, and Zephyr Sols. Art for manual, label and cover, and music. Legendary Spear by Dave Christensen. Uzi the Goo Slime Quest by VHZC Games, Vladimir Zuniga. Raptor by Andrew Polly. Razor's Edge by Red Button Games. Leonardo Santiago. Design, development, graphics, music, sound effects, gameplay, illustrations, text, and final art and Claudia Maria illustrations. Zarkstars 2 Ground Force by Leandro Camera, Programming, Design and Soundtrack. Haytor Messiel, Programming, Consulting. Vivienne Petsaibis, Design and Text Consulting. Kenny Schmidt, Cover Illustration. Leonardo Santiago, Hardware.
And Tanya's got the red I envelope. Do I have the red envelope. Lucky red envelope. <laughs> So who gets lucky today? <laughs> okay, in third place, we have Raptor by Andrew Polly. And in second place, we have Zark Stars 2 Ground Force by Leandro Camera for Programming Design and Soundtrack, Hator Maciel uh, for Programming Consulting, Vivian Petsaibis for Design and Text Consulting, Kenny Schmidt for Cover Illustration, and Leonardo Santiago for Hardware. And the winner for Atari 2600 Best Graphics Original is Razor's Edge by Red Button Games. Leonardo Santiago for design, development, graphics, music, sound effects, gameplay, illustrations, text, and final art. And Claudia Maria for the illustrations. Congratulations. Congratulations. And I have a written speech here from Leonardo Santiago. Uh, and there's going to be a video at the end of it. Uh, it says the following video shows the graphic evolution during the development of the game. So we'll take a look at that after. At the end of 2020, I started making some sketches of a game in the one of the styles I like the most, beat 'em up In the beginning, I still used basic knowledge and didn't care, for much, uh, care much about the graphics and appearance of the game. After some time, I decided to change the sprites looking for inspiration in games that I liked, changing the protagonist, who was previously a man, to Sarah, a version totally inspired by character Blaze Fielding from Streets of Rage. Most of the char uh, characters are variations of Sarah, and a few others emerge during development. Sarah has smooth movement with her eight sprites in total. Most of the other characters have six sprites in addition to the elements, apple, life, chicken, etc and special characters like the skater and the biker. But there was a moment when the limitations imposed by Batari Basic forced me to learn assembly, and thus created my own kernel, giving me the freedom to create new scenarios and elements that a game of this style would need. In summary, it was my, dis it was my dissatisfaction with the visual aspect of the game that made me evolve by learning a new language and creating graphics with the level I d levels I desired so that today I could be here receiving my this award with pride and happiness. It is the recognition of the public for the effort and dedication that I had during the development. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the people who participated directly and indirectly in this process. Thanks to Andrew Davey, Daryl Spice Jr., Spiceware, and D Dwayne Hahn, Random Terrain, for providing wonderful text that allowed me to learn assembly in an easy and fast way. Thanks to my family, Giselli and Alice Santiago, to my test and development partners, Leandro Camera, Luciano Clemente, and Claudia Maria. Thanks to everyone who participated and voted for the game, the sponsors of the 5th Annual Atari Homebrew Awards, the Zero Page Homebrew Team for organizing and presenting this wonderful event, and to Atari Age for being the home of Atari developers. Great. Thank you so much, Leandro. And we've got a little video uh, showing off uh, the graphics evolution of the game. So let's take a look at that.
Congratulations again. A nice Wonderful. little uh, video showing the evolution of the graphics yeah. there. Uh, very nice graphics in that game. I'm always inspired to buy pink crop tops because of that game. <laughs> Back to the 80s we yeah. go. Hair in the, hair in the <laughs> ponytail, pink crop top. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Uh, <laughs> next, we're going to uh, move on to Atari 2600 Best Graphics Port. And uh, this is graphics again, but in a game that you might know or might not know, but it is a port of an existing game. So let's take a look at the nominees. Atari 2600 Graphics Port Gorf Arcade by Champ Games John Champeau, Coding and Design Nathan Strum, Graphics, Voice, Packaging Artwork and Bob DeCrescenzo, Music and Sounds. Invaders from Andromeda by Carmelo Cisano. Load Runner by Tozai Games. Dionoid Game Studios. Dion Olsthorn, Programming. And David Exton, Packaging artwork. Kicks by Champ Games. John Champeau, Nathan Strum, Graphics, Bob DeCrescenzo, Sound, David Exton, Packaging artwork. Ruby Q by Silvio Mogno and Vladimir Zuniga, Packaging artwork. Stratovox by Carlos Centeno and Corey Kramer, packaging artwork. Let's take a look at what's inside this for best graphics port. In third place, Ruby Q by Silvio Magno and Vladimir Zuniga for packaging artwork. Second place, Gorf Arcade by Champ Games, John Champeau coding a design. Nathan Strum, graphics voice packaging artwork, and Bob DeCrescenzo, music and sounds. And the winner is for best graphics port Atari 2600, Load Runner by Tozai Games, Dinoid Games Studios, Dion Olsthorn for programming, and David Exton for packaging artwork. Congratulations, and we have Dion coming to us live. Welcome, Dion. Congratulations. What an astounding piece of workload runner is. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I James and Tonya and Darcy. I hope you can hear me, that my mic is working. All good. It is. It is all good. Okay, yeah. Um, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really super proud of, of winning the, the, the best graphics for the Atari 2600 port. Um, it's... it's really amazing i, I it, this was like a really strong category i saw all the other containers and i was like oh uh, gorf is really good and <laughs> i know the the ruby q is really good and kicks this and uh but anyway a uh, load runner one which is uh, something i'm really really happy about and really proud about um let, let me start uh, with with thanking giving a big thanks to uh, tosa games which you already uh, mentioned because Toza Games is they, they own the IP of Loadrunner and I, I worked with them especially with with Sheila from Toza Games and together with Al on getting like an official licensed version of Loadrunner for the Atari 2600 which I'm really proud of we got like an official version um, and also a big shout out to Al like all the work he has put into getting the license getting all the artwork the, the things printed the 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 cartridges uh, uh manufactured stuff like that it's amazing um also a big shout out to to david exton which did the he did the artwork of the box but sometimes the artwork also ties into the in-game graphics uh like i know we had a discussion about how to print load runner should we put the words load and runner like on top of each other or next to each other so eventually we decided to put them like next to each other so that also changes like how i made the the, uh, the in-game graphics uh basically made it the same way um yeah th th things uh, people i want to 
especially, especially thanks for uh, uh, the graphics of this game is also Thomas Jentsch, which he worked on me for getting like all the 150 levels and, and compressing those into a game cartridge of, of like 32K. Um, so that's that's a big part of also the graphics you're seeing on screen. Um, so it's it's um, it's amazing that we got all those levels in. I, I didn't expect it basically, but it's uh, 150 on uh, 150 levels all in one cartridge, which uh, makes me very happy. So uh, yeah, yeah, it's basically I probably forgot a lot of people, but uh, <laughs> um, thanks for 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 the community on voting not only for my game for all the games uh, i i love the atari age community and uh, um, i love this show also uh, so that that's that's meaning a lot to a lot of people and also to me so uh, thank you uh, james and tanya thank you dion an astounding achievement a load runner is such a it's like a perfect conversion for the 2600 and the graphics are just spot on and uh it's amazing that it can even be Thanks. on the 2600 so congratulations again dion and uh, we will talk with you soon. Okay. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Yes. Excellent. Excellent game. There you go, Darcy. Um, so next we now we have music and sound. Should we switch out? We'll switch out I during think so, the video. So maybe during the video. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We're having our own sound Headset. issues. Mine's, mine's oh, is it mine's cutting out? Cutting oh, out. it's yeah. time to switch. Mine's <laughs> fine so far. So uh, fitting, fitting we're at music and sound. Now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So uh, next category is Atari 2600 uh, music and sound. Everything you hear in the game. And this is for uh, music and sound original. So let's take a look at the nominees for that. Atari 2600 Music and Sound Original Grizzards by Bruce Robert Pocock Programming, Manual Text, In-Game Artwork and Sound Effects and Zephyr Sols Art for Manual, Label and Cover and Music Uzi the Goo Slime Quest by VHZC Games, Vladimir Zuniga Orbital War by Leandro Camera, Programming Design and Soundtrack. Hitor Messiel, Programming Consulting. Vivienne Petsaibis, Design and Text Consulting. Raptor by Andrew Polly. Razor's Edge by Red Button Games. Leonardo Santiago, Design, Development, Graphics, Music, Sound Effects, Gameplay, Illustrations, Text, and Final Art. And Claudia Maria, Illustrations. Space Pac-Man by Game Select. Ricardo Pim, Concept and Programming. Wilson Gutierrez, Assembly Code and Production. Hello. Hello. So, yep. uh, you gonna read it out? Yeah, I'll read it okay. out. I'll read out this one. So, for Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Original. In third place, we have Raptor by Andrew Pauly. And then we have a tie for second place. So, uh, the tie is between Space Pac-Man by Game Select, uh, by Repar Ricardo Pim, Concept and Programming, and Wilson Gutierrez, Assembly Code and Production, and Razor's Edge by Red Button Games, Leonardo Santiago, Design, Development, Graphics, Music, Sound Effects, Gameplay, Illustrations, Text, and Final Art, and Claudia Maria for Illustrations. And winner for Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Original, Orbital War by Leandro Camera for Programming Design and Soundtrack, Hator Maciel for Programming Consulting, Vivian Petsaibis for Design and Text Consulting. Congratulations. Congratulations! 
And we have a written statement here from Leandro Camera. I'll give these to you to get working. What Are am I going to? Okay, I'll do it. Just turn it on, right? Uh, no. Um, it was a pleasant surprise for me to have Orbital War nominated in three categories this year. We're all very happy here to be able to participate for the third time in the awards, even with such good games competing in this edition. We're now even more happy to receive this award. Orbital War was a challenge I set myself to do as my first game that stays on a single screen throughout the entire game. In addition, it was my first game to, game to have 8K, different from my previous ones from the Dark Stars Saga, which have 16K, and being a game that could be played alone or cooperatively with more than one joystick. But making music or soundtrack or sounds for the Atari is always a challenge, regardless of the game. And trying to do something that doesn't sound the same or so similar to an existing effect from the time, and even so, not losing certain characteristics of the console's language ends up becoming even a greater challenge in my point of view. To create different sensations of advancement and tension during the game, since it was fixed on only one screen, I used the soundtrack in a more radical way to signal and set changes that visually did not happen, intentionally with such vigor. Thanks always to Hator Missel, uh, my mentor, who was always willing to help me for, with my ideas for the Atari 2600. I also thank my friend and beta tester, Daniel Medina, who got involved and had lots of fun with Orbital War during the process. Even creating, alone and on his own, supports for use of two simultaneous controls for the game. Thanks again to the Batari team and the creators of Stella Emulator and the Harmony cartridge. Without you, most new games for this platform would not exist. And thank you all for the second consecutive Music and Sound Award. I'm glad you're enjoying what I've been trying to do. I think it's working. Thanks. Congratulations, Lando Camera, for that. Fantastic. And we have a uh, sponsor coming up. Uh, yeah, I'll fix that. Yeah, can if we, you... should we deal with our... Yeah, we've got a bit... Give us, give us a second. <laughs> a sound issue. Yeah. Um, if you could go to uh, the pre-show screen. There you go. And just go. All right. So I think we're good. We got our Bluetooth sorted out. We had to change headsets. The other one was running out of battery. Mm -hmm. Let's step forward a little bit. And we're going to be talking with Brian from Argon, one of the uh, wonderful sponsors of the Atari Homebrew Awards. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you so much. Hi there. Great to see you again. <laughs> Great to see you as well. Um, so talk a little bit uh, about the games, the the nominees that were hosted on Argon that people were able to play. Sure. So, um, I mean, first I want to say that, man, this was another great year for Atari Homebrew. I mean, prolific. Um, and it was so good to see so many 8-bit uh, games and 7800 games. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm glad those, those categories came to the contest. And... Um, 
We've got about uh, 30 of the nominees are in Argonne, and we have a special section. Um, uh, the backdrop that you're seeing is um, our TV user interface. So you'll see a special Atari Homebrew Awards section that shows up. Um, we, we did it last year, and we did it again this year for the month of uh, February. And uh, it, it was just great to, to work with everyone to get their games uh, added into the platform and available for folks to enjoy on their phones and tablets. Um, new, new this year for us, uh, we're now on the Amazon App Store, which gets us on uh, Fire Stick and uh, Amazon Kid tablets. And uh, as of January, the Microsoft Store, so Windows 11. So there's a whole bunch of ways to, to enjoy these games digitally now. So uh, maybe run through which platforms uh, that you do support, not just Atari, but other ones as well. Of, of course. So, um, yeah, I, I was watching you earlier in the show, you know, saying everything but ST. So we're uh, <laughs> we're everything but ST and but Jaguar. Um, right. That would be a cool one for us to add um, maybe maybe someday. But but everything else, uh, 2600, uh, 5200, uh, 7800, 8-bit and Lynx. And then um, a whole bunch of other awesome 8 bit platforms, uh, Vectrex and Television, Coleco, uh, NES. And uh, we've got some really awesome ones coming up uh, March, April timeframe uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game wow. Boy Advance. And uh, this one might be controversial. We'll see. Um, <laughs> a fantasy platform called Pico 8 that we're really excited oh. about. Very nice. There's lots of uh, fun yep. little homebrews for Pico 8. Oh, there's thousands of them. Thousands yeah. of them. Um, yeah, I, and uh, related to that, I started writing a column uh, myself for Old School Gamer about indie game development. So over time, um, we'll be spending uh, each column on a different platform. So we'll, we'll work our way through the Atari platforms as well. That's excellent. Yeah, a lot of reactions in the uh, chat to Pico 8. Lots of fans there. Yeah, I see, see it coming uh, up on, on my feeds, on social media all the time. These cool looking, tiny, uh, pixelated games for the Pico 8, and they look like so much fun. So it'll be great to have a, an easy to use platform to try them out on. Yes, I mean, that's that's been our goal all along with Argon is to just make it about playing the games and not, you know, hunting for things and configuring things. Right. Um, so so Pico 8, today you'd typically be playing it in web browser or maybe on like RetroPie or something like that. So there's there's thousands of games and they're playable, but uh, this will bring them, we hope, to a, a much larger audience. And just the, you know, the ability to play Pico 8 games on your, you know, your living room TV with a game yeah. controller is just so much, so much better than, than web browser based. Yeah, and it, and it makes it, uh, the, the Argon makes it so easy to just jump in and try out a whole bunch of games. And it really helped with the Atari Homebrew Awards that people were able to just look at them all in one interface through one emulator on the go on their phone and jump from platform to platform. They don't need, you know, a computer to do it. Uh, they don't need to load up five emulators to do it. They don't need the original hardware. They could just punch in and and of course, all being in one area of Oregon is, is really helpful as well. So I want to thank you so much for doing this again this year and putting the nominees uh, on the platform. And I'm, and I'm sure the, uh, the developers are very appreciative of that as well, giving them a, a broader audience outside of the community. Yeah, especially for some of the more obscure consoles like Vectrex. I mean, I, I think there may have only been 100,000 or so of these units you know, built back in the day. So being able to share them with people that don't necessarily have the hardware or, or the ability to afford the hardware. I mean, Vectrexes have gone, gotten crazy expensive in the yeah. last uh, two or so years. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice to be able to, to bring, bring these games to you know, as many people as we can. And... You know, related to that, it was, it was so cool to see um, you guys as well as uh, Al and Atari Age at Portland Retro this year. That was That's great right. to it was great to talking with finally, you. <laughs> finally <laughs> see everyone again in person. And and yes. Al just had an awesome booth, and you guys were doing great interviews, and it, yeah, that was yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was. So thank yeah. you.
again for being a sponsor of the Atari Homebrew Awards and supporting everything that's going on in the community um, and bringing these great games to another platform and another way for people to play them. So thank you so much, Brian. Oh, thanks for doing this. This is this is an amazing contribution to the community that you guys do. So thanks. Yeah. So we'll talk with you soon. Thank you so much, Brian. Bye bye. Excellent. Um, yeah, they've been a great support of the Atari Homebrew Wars for many years. Yes. And um, and we talked with them at PRGE, yeah, and it was yeah. great to see them in person. Great to see everybody in person again. We did a, a bit of an interview with uh, yeah. Argon, yes. Yeah, and yeah. a bunch of other people. Yeah. 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 Um, so we're going to be keeping on with Atari 2600. Uh, now we're going to go to the port best music and sound. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, ports are games that you might recognize. And uh, a while back, we decided to separate them out into ports and original. Mm -hmm. Um, because uh, ports got a lot of attention because there's familiarity and stuff, but people love ports because yes. it's like, oh my god, finally this game has come to the 2600 yeah. and it's amazing to see people take arcade quality games and squeeze them onto a cartridge yeah. for the 2600 and they do so well. And sometimes too, taking a modern game and porting it, yes, you know, back in time to a system. It. Well, yeah. I wouldn't even say demaking it, That's but you're going back in, yeah. back in, back in, uh, you, you're jumping right. in your time machine That's and bringing right. it back. It's like, what would this game look like exactly. if it was back in 1983? I love, it. I love that, yeah. It yeah. is fun. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Port. Atari 2600 Music and Sound Port. Gorf Arcade by Champ Games. John Champeau, Coding and Design. Nathan Strum, Graphics, Voice, Packaging Artwork. And Bob DeCrescenzo, Music and Sound. Invaders from Andromeda by Carmelo Cisano. Load Runner by Tozai Games. Dionoid Game Studios, Dion Olsthorn, Programming, and David Exton, Packaging Artwork. Kicks by Champ Games, John Champeau, Nathan Strum, Graphics, Bob DeCrescenzo, Sound, David Exton, Packaging Artwork. Ruby Q by Silvio Magno and Vladimir Zuniga, packaging artwork. Word Guess by Anthony Blackman. Here we go, uh, Atari 2600 Best Music and Sound Port. Let's move up a little closer so we're bigger. <laughs> uh, third place, uh, Kicks by Champ Games, John Champo, Nathan Strum for graphics, Bob DeCrescenzo for sound, and David Exton for packaging artwork. In second place, Ruby Q by Silvio Magno and Vladimir Zuniga for packaging artwork. And the winner is... Gorf Arcade by Champ Games, John Champo, Coding and Design, Nathan Strum for Graphics, Voice Packaging, Artwork, and Bob DeCrescenzo for Music and Sounds. And since this is a Music and Sounds category, we have Robert DeCrescenzo on the line to accept the award. Let's bring him up. Congratulations, Bob. Oh yeah, clap, clap, clap. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. I, right. I, uh, I You're outdoors. This is a first, I think, uh, for uh, accepting an accepting award outdoors. Congratulations. Oh, thanks. I, um, John was great because he knows that I get overwhelmed easily. So he gave me a couple of sounds at a time. 
<laughs> so, so I can work on them. Yeah. So I, I can work on them. And then he says, okay, I got these three. And I said, okay, you know, do them. And he got, okay, I got these three. Uh, so yeah, this, nice. this was fun. I had a, I had a fun time doing this. And uh, between John and Nathan, you, you can't get two better people. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you. That's, that's, that's really, really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, congratulations on that. Uh, and and Gorf is such a fun game and such a big game to work on. Um, so yeah, I, I, I hope people uh, appreciate every level of it, the, the graphics, the sound that you put into it, the program being behind it. It's quite an outstanding collaborative effort. Yeah, it, it is. It is. I, everybody at Atari Age is just great, as I always as I always say. I, I, I love everybody there. And, and John was nice enough to pull me on board and and Nathan's graphics are incredible. So I, I mean, it's like <laughs> this is a great team. Every everybody's really, really wonderful. I I, I really believe so. So it's it's very cool. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bob, and congratulations again on the win. Thanks. And uh, we will see you in the forums. Yes, you will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. Gorf is uh, such a great game. Um, so next up, we're going to move out of the 2600 okay. into Atari 8-bit 5200. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we're into best homebrew overall. This is the cumulative of everything all together. The sound, the music, uh, the programming, everything. So these awards are for uh, Atari 8-bit 5200 best homebrew overall, and here are the nominees. Atari 8-Bit and 5200 Homebrew. Arcadia by Amarok. Bubble Shooter by Pavel Novak, Code, Mauche Hauka, Graphics, Michał Szyplowski, Sound Effects. Bunny Hop by Franciszek Hura, Code, Zdenek Eisenhammer, Graphics and Music, Vin Samuel, Audio Driver. On Escape by Vortador Games, Franticek Hora, Code, Zdenek Eisenhammer, Graphics, Marek Preschout, Soundtrack and Story. Robin Banks by Phasercat Games, Ryan Whitmer, Design and Programming, Konstantinos Giamalidis, Character and Object Graphics, Bobby Clark, Sound Effects and Music, Briar Udalian cover art, Tony Morse manual layout. Scorch by Pavel Kalinowski and Tomasz Pechko, MK splash screen music, Michał Szyplowski in game music, Kishishtov Zembik splash screen graphics, Adam Vahovski fonts and graphic support. Are you ready for the Polish names? No. Okay, there's uh, little brackets and there's phonetic... Uh... You ruined it. If I pulled it off, they would have thought it was amazing. <laughs> now they're just going to hate me even more if I go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Atari 8-Bit 5200 Best Homebrew. Third place, Robin Banks by Phaser Cat Games. Ryan Whitmer, Design and Programming. Konstantinos... What? Where's... Oh, anyway. Some don't. Okay. Konstantinos... Gimal Dis, Maladis, Character and Object Graphics, Bobby Clark, Sound Effects and Music. Here I are, Ubedalian, Dalian, Cover Art, and Tony uh, Morse, uh, Manual Layout. Obviously, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Obviously. It's implied. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> second place. Um, on Escape or One Escape by Vort Vortador Games. Um, Fire! 
Frantishek Hora uh, Code Zdenek Eisenhammer Graphics Marek Pasha Soundtrack and Story uh, And the winner is Bubble Shooter by Pavel Novak for Code Machi Haukyu uh, Graphics and Mihao Shiplovsky Sound Effects all right, congratulations. And uh, a lot of people are congratulating Tanya for the pronunciations <laughs> in the video. I did the best I could. <laughs> you did great. Um, and we've got a written statement here from uh, Pavel Novak. Uh, Welcome to all the viewers of the uh, annual Atari Homebrew Awards and our hosts, uh, Tanya James and Darcy and Atari. Our team, except for me, are my colleagues uh, Michael uh, Spilovsky, who created the rhythmic background music, and Maciej Hauka, uh, Rocky, responsible for the graphic design, and beta tester uh, Tomasz Biela. Thank you to everyone who voted and everyone who took part. It's another year where many high-level works were published. There are a lot of work-in-progress productions out there, and Atari's doing well. Just on my end, our game consumed more than 230 of my evenings for more than two years. Uh, my, the game engine itself is in its third version. A few additional tools have been created for the game on the PC, level, PC, a level editor and an AI graphics grabber, for the Atari, an object editor, and I've collected materials for almost a thousand levels based on the original game, which has over 8,000 of them. The version that was released for the small Atari has 300 of them. It is possible that we'll make a second version of the game with new levels, but no one has reached the end of my current game yet and discovered the surprise. Oh. Uh, the nomination itself was very rewarding, and the win meant that I would finish the games I've started in various phases stopped. Flying points, pinball, road game. I will definitely keep, need the help of graphic artists and musicians again for these. I want to keep the level of quality and show off the capabilities of this old computer. Again, very colorful with better video and audio synchronization, but without pushing the maximum of the display so that there's time left for NTSC. Thank you for people in NTSC land. I pay my respects to all those who devote their free time without gaining profits and only for the joy of creating and receiving thanks from others. See you at the computer conventions and may Atari always be with us. Uh, Pavel Novak, amateur programmer, he says. Congratulations. I don't know if winning an award makes you a professional, but you're Getting pro and makes you a professional. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> All you have to do is make a dollar and yeah. you're a professional. Yeah. Being pat, getting a pat on the back doesn't, yeah, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't do go, it. you don't go pro that way. No. Ah, damn it. Um, so next up, uh, we're going to take a look at Atari Lynx, a best homebrew. And so let's take a look at the nominees for Atari Lynx. Atari Lynx Homebrew. 8-Bit Slicks by Anthony Bocamp, Carl Forhan, Music, Andrew Fisher, Music Title Track. Critter Championship by Jasper Van Turnout, Code and Graphics, Side Effects, Music, Nabucco 88, Artwork. CSS Traffic Regulation by Frederick Descharmes, Code and Graphics, Zero Square, Code, Templeton, Graphics, Vector Pocket, Graphics, Mihao Shiplovsky, Music and Sound Effects. Dance Bro by Stephen Reed. Drunk Witch by Carrie Kaksinen. The Viking Trilogy Volume 2, Protect the Love, by Rygar. Ooh. 
Who are you? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're talking. And I've got the winners here. Let's take a look. This is for Atari Lynx Best Homebrew. In third place, The Viking Trilogy Volume 2, Protect the Love by Rygar. In second place, CSS Traffic Regulation by Frederick Descharmes. Code and Graphics, Zero Square for Code, Templeton for Graphics, Vector Pocket Graphics, Michael uh, Michał Spilowski, Music and Sound Effects. And the winner is 8-Bit Slicks by Anthony Bocomp. Bocomp? Uh, Carl Forehand for music and Andrew Fisher, uh, music title track. <laughs> and we have on the line uh, with us Anthony Bocomp. Can you pronounce your last name for me so I uh, stop doing it wrong? Hello, James. Uh... So my name is Bocan. Huh? I'm a French person. Bocan. And, uh, Excellent. Right. Yeah. And thank you very much uh, to you, Tanya, and all the team for organizing this event. I think it's really amazing what you're doing. Congratulations. So maybe I'll, I'll talk a little bit about 8B Slicks. Um, it's a game that's uh, inspired by a 90s, 90s uh, DOS game called Slicks and Slide. And I remember spending many hours with my uh, three younger brothers all crammed around the PC keyboard so that we could do uh, four player mod. So I wanted to bring the experience to uh, Atari 8 bit, Lynx, many other systems, uh, but with the added twist of having an online multiplayer mod. And uh, Timo Kopinen, who is the original creator of uh, Six and Slide, uh, gave his blessing to the project. So it was in development for maybe three, four years and uh, led to the creation of the 8 bit Unity SDK and also a little networking box called the 8-bit hub. Uh, but the most important part, it's a fun little game. So you can jump in, have a quick race, like you did last year with Tanya uh, in one of your live streams. Yes, uh, yeah. that was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's what matters uh, to have fun. So yeah, for, for credits, uh, of course, Carl has been amazing. He co-produced the game and published it. Uh, Andrew for the title track. Uh, my wife, Saki, also, she, she did a lot of little pixel work on the racetracks, uh, as, well, as well as soldering and assembling each 8-bit hub that uh, Carl is selling. And then the testers, Filippo, uh, Santeloco, and Alex Thyssen, so many times get connected to test together. <laughs> of course, the Atari, uh, the Atari Age community is amazing. They always give many coding tips and feedback. And... Uh, I also want to thank the patrons who've been supporting this uh, LBT project. If it's okay, I'd like to talk also about the, the next project we are working on. Um, I'll just show a, a quick video if, if the sharing screen function works. <laughs> ah, technology. Me, so, <laughs> just tell me if something's coming up on, on your side. Yeah, all looks good. Yeah, okay, so I'll launch a video. So it's another online game. And uh, this one is inspired by Counter-Strike 2D. So really it's trying to bring uh, the experience of Counter-Strike 2D to the 8-bit. And we're gonna support the Atari 8-bit, the Lynx, other systems like the, the C-Word. And so it's got all the weapons and you can play live with other players. Um, it's a work in progress, but as you can see in the, in the screenshots, it, it's progressing very well. It might come towards the end of 2023, if everything goes well. And uh, that's all for me. And I think maybe Carl might have some words as well he wants to share. There we go. Well, thank you so much. Um, great game, and it's amazing that it has it's it's not only multiplayer but multi-platform as well. You can play against people on different platforms. So, uh, congratulations on such a uh, uh, ambitious game. Um, great stuff. So, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you very much. See you guys. And talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye. And uh, we're going to move on to Atari Jaguar Best Homebrew. And uh, this is a, a new category because Jaguar is brand new this year. 
So let's take a look at the nominees for Atari Jaguar Best Homebrew. Atari Jaguar Homebrew. Astroite by Alexander von Noring, Programming, Game Design, Engine Design. And Eternal Krauser, CGI, Animation, Character Design, Manual and Packaging Design, Music and Sound Effects. Brawn and Brains by Lawrence Staveley for Dragon Keep, Rick Day for Tiles, Matt Mook Jaguar for Do the Same. Gravitic Minds by Reboot, Lawrence Staveley, Ander Lex, Rold Strauss for Music, William Thorup Packaging Artwork. Kings of Edom by Songbird, Alexander von Noring. Last Strike by Lawrence Staveley, Code, Hoffman and MSG-RG, Music, Sonic for Logo and Full Screen Artwork, Tiki Pod for Sprite Animation, William Thorup, Packaging Artwork. Simone by Risk Games, Clint Thompson. Who's got the envelope? Darcy does. Let's see who's written on that. Atari Jaguar Best Homebrew. In third place, Kings of Edom by Songbird, Andrew Von Noring. Uh, second place, Asterite by Alexander Von Noring, Programming, Game Design, Engine Design. Uh, Eternal Krauser, CGI animation, character design, manual and packaging design, music and sound effects. And the winner is Gravatic Minds by Reboot, Lawrence Stavely, Alexander Lex, Roland Strauss, music, and William Thorup, packaging artwork. Oh, and we have Lawrence on the line. Congratulations, Lawrence, on another win. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's just awesome to be back again after an hour and talk to you guys again. <laughs> you hung in there. <laughs> I did, I hung in there. It's been an early morning this morning. Um, <laughs> it, it started at like 6.30 a.m. It's not that cool for you, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we try our best to somewhat keep it in the lit hours <laughs> all over the world. For us, for us anyway. We yeah, just sneaked it bad. in for you. <laughs> it was worth getting up for, I'll say that. That was great. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, again, thank everybody for their support. Uh, and there's a cat climbing over your camera. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> they do that. You just have to live with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing that uh, the, the quality of the games that have come out in the last couple of years have just been fantastic. And, and to be recognized again like this is, is just brilliant. And... Um, Andrew and myself would like to thank everybody for, for voting and everybody for um, basically getting involved and, and keeping the, the Jaguar alive. It's an underrated console and it's it's good to see it getting out there finally, especially with the new emulator. So hopefully things will pick up with with stuff there. So that will get a lot of new people in. Um, I suppose I'll do the, the, the thanks and everything for this now. Um, uh, and uh, obviously for just amazing artwork i mean he's already cleaned up with the links with odin x's so like he's he's yeah. doing well today <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah uh it's a privilege to work with him as i said he'll he'll put keep me in line and uh uh if, if he doesn't like something he'll let me know as i said earlier so we, we we've tried to put the best thing together that we have but the quality of his artwork is just amazing so it, it doesn't Beautiful. look like it's a lot it, it looks like oil paintings it's just you look at it and you go wow <laughs> <laughs> um, got rolled again for the music um using the u235 sound engine um and we have the story for from um andrew rosa uh mastercast tv he wrote all the backstory and and 
built up characters for like the computer AI and everything else in the game. So um, it kind of brought that world to life. Um, I'd like to thank Kendall for the speech. Uh, please learn to fly. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And, uh, and the artwork from there by Will Thorup is Gorgeous. just wow. Like, yeah, he drew. He basically drew this as a mock-up for like this is the sort of thing I'm going for, and we were like, "No, you finished. You finished, dude." You done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gorgeous, beautiful. Yeah, artwork. so so this was meant to be like taken further and expanded upon, but we just thought, "Wow, that just looks so great. Just keep it, keep it as it is." Um, and then Albert again for putting together the the packaging and everything, and going the extra mile with the deluxe packaging with the hats and the labels and the stickers and all the other stuff in there. That was that was really cool. Um, and also Atari had used a machine. Uh, he's running competitions right now on the forum and giving away patches and things for people who complete the pilot mission. Um, so yeah, I mean the game started as a fun little thrust type project. We thought it would be like a small, quick game. Get get it finished in a, in a couple of months and, and shove, uh, shove it out there for people to, uh, to play but it just it kept growing and growing and growing to the point where Andrew and myself thought this this is never going to get finished <laughs> <laughs> it's a big game it's it's, it's huge a, it's yeah. a, just for anyone who doesn't know there's 43 megabytes of data in that 6 meg card so it's, <laughs> wow. cr it's crammed in there there's a lot in there um, yeah uh Again, I'm just uh, so happy to, to, to be able to, to accept this award. And uh, on, on behalf of Ender as well, would like to thank everybody again. And uh, I'd like to say to Tanya, beware of infected pilots. <laughs> he says, beware of infected pilots. That's what uh, yeah, Lawrence says to you. <laughs> yeah, because Tan Tanya triggered the first infected pilot I've seen on a stream, and her reaction was just priceless. <laughs> <laughs> you you triggered the first infected pilot on a stream, apparently, <laughs> and your reaction was priceless. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, she does that. She does that in games. She somehow finds something that nobody has ever done in a game, and yep. uh, it always uh, is very surprising. Is that unique? <laughs> Yeah, he's never seen it on a stream before. Actually, Happened. Been, been triggered. Yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Good to see that live. It was. That was. That was very cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the thing that jumped out yeah, was it that? Yeah, oh, yeah I know. where it jumps yeah. out on the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah, was yeah, hilarious. The screen. That was. That was, that was funny. <laughs> that was hilarious. Yeah. So again, like I said, first time for the Jaguar. So yeah, an extra honor to be the first one to get this. So um, hopefully. Many more years of Jaguar homebrew. The, the scene is just growing, and, and the quality of the titles is, is there. So, um, to everybody else who didn't get this, congratulations just for getting a game finished. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a huge accomplishment just finishing a game. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Taking it from a work in progress to a final title is, is like starting again. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's... laughs> Well, congratulations, Lawrence, once again. Uh, it's an amazingly fun game. Uh, we're trying to work towards that uh, that pilot card. Hopefully we make it before they run out. Uh, we'll be well, doing some some after darks. Well, and... Once you get to the pilot, you unlock the East campaign, and that is a completely different set of missions. It's not the same stuff all harder. It's wow. new missions. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. Oh, it's a huge game. Uh, yeah, lots of fun. Yeah. Well, congratulations, thank and, and thank you for coming on again. Thank you. Okay, talk to you soon, Lawrence. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Excellent. Hand that off to Tanya. And uh, the next category is a, a unique category. It's a cross platform category be because it's best packaging. Now, this is not the game itself, it's not the graphics, it's not the sound, it's not the programming. It is everything else. It's the artwork on the cartridge. It's the box. It's the things that come with the game. The feelies, as they're called. <laughs> um, um, you know, some things include hats and some things include like uh, little pins or badges or lots of fun things. So this category is for best packaging. And because it has nothing to do with the games, we made it cross platform. So 2600s, Jaguars, Lynx. Uh, 50, all of them can compete together in this. So let's take a look at the nominees for best packaging.
Atari Packaging Dagger Quest II Mystery of the Blue Robot by Marcin Wipinski Gravitic Minds by Reboot Lawrence Stavely Ander Lex Rold Strauss Music William Thorup Packaging Artwork Last Strike by Lawrence Stavely Code Hoffman and MSG-RG Music Sonic Logo and Full Screen Artwork Tiki Pod Sprite Animation William Thorup Packaging Artwork Load Runner by Tozai Games, Dionoid Game Studios, Dion Olsthorn, Programming, David Exton, Packaging Artwork. Orbital War by Leandro Camera, Programming Design and Soundtrack, Hator Maciel, Programming Consulting, Vivienne Petsaibis, Design and Text Consulting. The Viking Trilogy by Rygar. Okay. And here we go for best packaging. All right. Are you going to do it? So, 17. The target best packaging. They don't know the numbers. We're oh, on the 17th we're award. We're on the 17th award. <laughs> Number 17. In internal paperwork. So, internal paperwork. <laughs> In third spot, we have Gravitic Minds by Reboot, Lawrence Stavely, Ander Lex, Rold Strauss for music, and William Thorpe for the packaging artwork. In second place, we have Load Runner by Tozai Games and Dionoid Game Studios. Dion Olsthorn for the programming and David Exton for the packaging artwork. And the winner, Orbital War by Leandro Camera for programming, design, and soundtrack. Hator Maciel for programming consulting. Vivienne Petsaibis for design and text consulting. Congratulations! Congratulations! And we have a written statement from Leandro Camera. Uh, thanks again, everyone. We are very honored to be able to lift this trophy for the third time. Uh, packaging has always been an important part of the game for us. We say that the player's experience begins when he receives in his hand the box and all the printed material that comes completes the game. With Orbital War, we managed to propose our first title and the first Brazilian game for Atari to accompany a board to be used along with the game. I'm very happy and proud that Orbital received this award as well, as we had great works competing this year. Thanks to Viviani Pasabis, my wife who always helps me with fun ideas, proofreading and supervising the design of my games. Viviane was also the first Orbital War beta tester, playing cooperatively with me, uh, believing in the success of the game from the beginning. Thank you, Vivi. Thank you to the committee for all the nominations we received this year. There were five nominations in total. And to the Atari age for maintaining an active community and following of Atari for so, for so many years. Thanks, James and the team at Zero Page Homebrew yay, for keeping the show going. You guys are great. Uh, and thank you again for the awards. Congratulations to all the nominees and winners. Oh, not forgetting, for those of you who are interested in my games, I want to say soon I will have news for James to show on the Zero Page Homebrew Show. I've been working on the fourth title of the Zark Stars Saga, Zark Stars 4 Nebula, which is already finished, and on two more titles for the Raw War series, Intruders and Escape from Mars. Keep an eye out on Facebook and the Zark Stars page, zarkstars.com. Wait for you there. More games coming from him. So congratulations yes. on the packaging. Congrats. I know it takes a lot of effort that goes into the packaging, not only the game. It is another level of things to do. It's like, oh, you finished the game? Not really. You've got all this extra stuff to do. The manual, all the artwork. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, so the next category, we're going to be moving into the Atari 7800. Uh, for continuing on with Best Homebrew, Best Homebrew Original 
for Atari 7800. So let's take a look at the nominees. Atari 7800 Homebrew Original. Cartesian Chaos by Carl Garrison. Death Merchant by Steve Englehart and Dave Exton Additional Graphics. Dragon's Havoc by Todd Fermansky. Drunk Witch by Carrie Kaxinen. Jacks or Better by Steve Engelhart. Touchdown Challenge by Steve Engelhart. Cats are complaining. They oh, got double breakfast lying, this morning. Lying. I fed them, then Tanya fed them. Yeah, now they're crying family. two hours early for dinner. Ugh. Ah, let's okay. take a look at the results. <laughs> uh, in third place, Death Merchant by Steve Engelhart and David Exton for additional graphics. In second place, Cartesian Chaos by Carl Garrison. And the winner is for Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Original. Dragon's Havoc by Todd Fermansky. And we have Todd on the line to accept the award. Welcome, Todd. Congratulations for the fun, fun game of Dragon's Havoc. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Um, no, this, this was great. It's, it's, it's just been a blast being a part of this community. You know, I, I'm having so much fun homebrewing. I, you know, I, uh, my day job is involves games, and I just I love making games for systems old and new. Um, I like to thank um, I mean a bunch of people who, who helped and basically made this possible. Um, Benedict Sheffer, who who designed the cover and manual for the, the box um, for the physical uh, the physical game. Um, uh, the the Atari Basic um, just community. I mean, um, you know, Mike Sarna, Fred Pimby, everybody there. That that's opening up so much possibility and you know, making it you know making homebrew more accessible to everybody um you know um you guys at you know, zero page that's you know it's it's been a blast watching you play play all sorts of amazing games i wouldn't have seen or known about otherwise and so it's 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 always a great to watch your show um al of course just for, for basically supporting on atari age um solomon i don't think any of this would be here without him um and just the whole community. Um, no, thank you. This is this this was great. And um, I have other projects, but again, they're they're watch the forums and um, Harpy's Curse in particular should be coming soon. Um, I'm really happy how that's mm -hmm. turning out. But um, again, thank you so much. Thank you for putting all of this on, and uh, it, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Todd. Uh, your games are always so much fun to play on the stream, and thank you for making a very unique and fun shoot 'em up game for the 7800 and congratulations on winning best homebrew for 7800 original this year so thank you so much and we will see you online take care bye bye always fun to play todd's games yes uh so the next one is atari 7800 best homebrew port now these are games that are uh, familiar to you, possibly. So let's take a look at the nominees for Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Port. Atari 7800 Homebrew Port. 1942 by Paul Lay, Code, Comic. 
Konstantinos Giamalidis, Graphics. Attack of the Petsky Robots by Chunky Pixel Games. Matt Smith and Mike Sarna, Noel Amon, Music, David Murray, originally coded by, Grazi Mello, Box and Manual Design, Brendan Carmody, Box and Manual Art. Keystone Coppers by Muddy Vision. Lewis Hill, Code, Graphics, Sound Effects. Bobby Clark, Pokey Ragtime Specials. Matt Smith, Music Support. And Bethany Hill, Additional Artwork. Robots Rumble by Chunky Pixel Games. Matt Smith, Bobby Clark, Sound. Mike Sarna, Graphics and Sound. Ventures 7800 by Peter Meyer, Programming, Kamikaze 20012, Conversion. Wordle by Chunky Pixel Games, Matt Smith, Mike Sarna, Dictionary Randomizer Selection Code. That was a hard guess on that one. Waxen? Waxen? You ever heard of that word? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, absolutely loaded category. Yes, 7800 has really taken off. Wonderful oh my goodness. games in that, yeah. Well, let's yeah. see the results. All right, so we have the Atari 7800 Best Homebrew Port. In third place, we have Robots Rumble by Chunky Pixel Games, Matt Smith, Bobby Clark for sound, and Mark Sarna for graphics and sound. We have a tie for second place. Mm. So we have Keystone Coppers by Muddy Vision, Lewis Hill, who did the code graphics sound effects, Bobby Clark, the Pokey Ragtime specials, Matt Smith for music support, and Bethany Hill for additional artwork. And also tied for second place, Attack of the Petsky Robots by Chunky Pixel Games, uh, Matt Smith and Mike Sarna, Noel Amon for the music, David Murray, who originally coded that game, Grazi Mello for box and manual design, and Brendan Carmody for box and manual art. And the winner, 1942 by Paul Lay for the code and Konstantinos Giamalidis for the graphics. And we have Paul Lay on the line to accept his award. Congratulations, Paul, on an excellent conversion port of 1942, one of my favorite games. Thank you so much for bringing it to the 7800. Oh, no, I'm, I'm really glad you liked it, uh, James. Um, and thank you, everyone, sort of, um, for me and from Constantness for um, voting for it. It was, uh, uh, I, I never, never expected to win, so it's uh, quite a surprise. Um, I obviously, I have to thank Const Constantinos for all the work they did, not not just the graphics, but all the sort of um, support and motivation to actually get a game complete. Um, it's, it, the whole thing kicked off because he wanted me to help him um, hack some graphics into a, an A8 game, and I wanted to do something a bit more positive. So he gave me a list of games, and I chose 1942. Not, not because I played it much, but one of my friends back in the day played it all the time. So I, I'd not yeah. played it myself, but I'd had a lot of experience of, of watching it. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the other person I'd like to thank is Mike Sarna, because the, the sound effects are all from his Tia library. So, which is great for me because I hate um, doing sound effects, <laughs> and, and 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 all the other stuff that Mike's provide, you know, the the 7800 emulator and documentation, you know. So, I, I don't think the homebrew 7800 homebrew would be there without all the work that Mike's done. Um, I also got to thank everybody that helped with the testing, yourself included. Um, mm -hmm. And everyone that helped with getting it running on Dragonfly because that was uh, that took a bit of work. So a big thanks to Raphael for for sorting that out. Um, this is the second Atari award I've got. 
the the first one I received was for an 8-bit typing game in Page Ma- 6 magazine, and that was in 1986. <laughs> wow. So that was 37 years ago. <laughs> so I, I, I think 2060 should be my next one. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, well, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you to everyone for... Um, yeah, it's, it's really nice to get the, the award. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Paul, and congratulations. An absolutely stunning game and so much fun to play. Like I said, 1942 is one of my favorite games, and mm-hmm. I just love playing it on the 7800. It's an excellent, excellent version of it. So congratulations. Right. Thank you. Thank you, and see you in the forums. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Ah, oh, so much fun. Yeah. So, um... Now we are coming to a kind of sad part of the show um, where we honor the people who are no longer with us um, that passed away during the past year. Uh, We started doing this last year and we caught up uh, for a number of years honoring the people who were part of the community or contributed some to the community or were known by the community in some aspect in the Atari community. Um, So we wanted to do it again this year. And so here are, uh, is the in memoriam to people that are no longer with us. Uh, so, uh, I want to thank uh, the nomination committee uh, once again for, we're not done yet, but <laughs> for uh, going through all the massive amounts of games mm-hmm. uh, this year. And uh, also, uh, it's uh, five years, I can't believe it's been five years doing this. Uh, the awards it's and amazing. the show. Yeah. I, I cannot believe it. So we're going into our sixth year of uh, Zero Page Homebrew. That's amazing. Uh, we played a lot of games, doing twice a week. Yes. Um, and we've expanded into doing Jaguar yeah. games this year. And all, we just started doing Jaguar. And we've just started doing Lynx games on the show. Because I got a consoleized Lynx um, from Igor at Atari Gamer. He consoleized the links for me. So that's VGA output and an external controller. And so we are fully set up. Oh, and also I got a PAL Atari 8-bit computer too. Mm -hmm. So I can play every game that everybody makes now because before I couldn't play this game and this game because it was PAL, I only had NTSC, but now I can do it all, which is great. (laughs) So much fun. Um, So we come to uh, the part in the show where we honor uh, the person who has contributed a ton to the community, uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award. Mm-hmm. So this is the award for the cumulative efforts of somebody, usually somebody that has done a lot of prominent things in the community, has been around for a long time contributing mm-hmm. to the scene in terms of programming or sound or graphics or um, making uh, development tools mm-hmm or emulators, and uh, this is the fourth year we've been honoring somebody for that. Um, so uh, if you could get the person on, uh, yeah, get them ready. Um, <clears throat> so everybody knows this person. <laughs> um, they have been uh, 
making things. I don't want to give it away too much. Um, <laughs> contributing to the community for so much, for so long. Oh my goodness. Um, and they've been doing so much for the community. It's absolutely unbelievable. And there's no doubt in anybody's mind that when we say the name of this person, uh, that they're going to say that he is undeserving of this award. So I'd like to welcome to the show uh, for the Lifetime Achievement Award, Robert DeCrescenzo, also known as Pac-Man Plus. Welcome, Bob. You're in a vehicle. Oh my goodness, what's going on? <laughs> We're driving this time, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no apologies necessary. No. You're not, are you driving right now? No, 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 I'm okay. not driving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> um, we, we, the incident might go in and out, but I wanted to make sure I'm, I'm, I'm on this. I, I, um, I, I couldn't believe that, well, that, first of all, that I was even nominated, then, let alone win, um, but, you know, I've been I've been a member of Atari Age for about oh, 20 years now, and and um, I, I I never I never believed I would win something like this. This is you guys, you guys are incredible. I I, I can't like even especially Al who started this whole thing. You know, and and everybody, the entire community is just unbelievable. I, I mean, I, I, like I said before, I love everybody on there, and and. Um, You guys mean a lot to me. Uh, you're a big part of my life, so I, I just I thank you. I, I, I gotta thank all of you, you, you guys, and and, and Al and, and everybody on there. I, I'll try to help as much as I can. Always is, you know, and um, I, I'm not done yet. <laughs> but, Keep going. Um, Keep going, yeah. <laughs> But uh, again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I, it really means a lot to me, and I, I, I will never ever forget this. And, and I thank you. I, I just can't say thank you enough. I, I, I really. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, you, Bob. So I, I think you've almost single-handedly kept the 7800 homebrew scene alive through those through those many 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 years before this huge explosion has happened. I think you. Um, um, reinvigorated um, the the scene to what it is now. Um, inspired so many developers in the 7800 homebrew scene. Um, you were making games when nobody, almost nobody else, was making 7800 games, and at a super super high quality. And like I said, I don't think anybody can argue. Um, that you deserve the Lifetime Achievement Award. And, and we don't want to imply that you're done because you got the <laughs> Lifetime Achievement Award. Uh, we definitely want you to keep making these amazing games and these amazing ports that you've been making all along. Um, but we just wanted to honor you and the nomination committee uh, wanted to honor you um, with this award. So they, they voted you right to the top and it is absolutely 100% well deserved. Nobody can argue with that, and I can see the the thanks pouring in in the chat. And uh, uh, just thank, thank you, you for so all the amazing games that you have put out. The dozens and dozens when we did the um, the marathon of your games and oh, yeah. and the homebrew spotlight on you. Uh, it it took a long time because <laughs> of how many games you made. So I want to thank you again for just how much you've contributed to the community. Thank you. I really, so seriously, thank you. I, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I really, I, I can't <laughs> tell you. Thank you so, so much. Well, From the bottom of my heart, again, thank you. You're very welcome, and and we'll let you get on with your adventures. You're definitely the the first person to an accept award outside, and yes. definitely the first person to accept award <laughs> while in a moving vehicle. <laughs> so this is uh, very very unique. So we'll let you go and, and let you get on with your travels, and and, and thank you <laughs> thank once again. Take, take. Thanks. Bye bye. And we'll, and we'll see you in the in the forums. Bye bye, Bob. Yes. Well, bye bye. <laughs> Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah. And so much fun <laughs> that he accepted it while driving. Yeah. That's great. Uh, so we're on to well, the last two. Our final two. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and uh, so this one is 
Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Port. This is the overall encompassing, all the pieces coming together, the artwork, the sound, the graphics, the game itself. Uh, so let's take a look at the nominees for Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Port. Atari 2600 Homebrew Port. Gorf Arcade by Champ Games. John Champo, Coding and Design. Nathan Strum, Graphics, Voice, Packaging Artwork. And Bob DeCrescenzo, Music and Sounds. Load Runner by Tozai Games. Dianoid Game Studios. Dion Alsthorn, Programming. David Exton, Packaging Artwork. Kicks by Champ Games. John Champo, Nathan Strum, Graphics. Bob DeCrescenzo, Sound. David Exton, Packaging Artwork. Ruby Q by Silvio Magno. And Vladimir Zuniga, Packaging Artwork. Stratavox by Carlos Centeno and Corey Kramer Packaging Artwork. Word Guess by Anthony Blackman. Darcy's back. Oh, and he's got a card. <laughs> What's in that? What's in the red envelope? It's a white piece of paper. Woo! Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Port. In third place, Ruby Q by Silvio Magno and Vladimir Zanega. Packaging and artwork. In second place, Gorf Arcade by Champ Games. Jean Chapeau, coding and design. Nathan Strom, graphics, voice, Packaging Artwork, and Bob DiCrescenzo, Music and Sounds. The winner is Load Runner by Tozai Games and Dianoid Game Studios. Dion Olstarn. Olstarn Programming and David Exton Packaging and Artwork. Woo! Woo! And we've got Dion on the line. Welcome back, Dion. Congratulations again for Load yeah. Runner. Oh my goodness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, great, great. I'm, a, I'm really the first thing when I when I heard that Load Runner won this award, I was like, wow. Um, <laughs> are, are you sure? Yes. <laughs> uh, like it, this, this was like I was looking at all the games in this category. Like there, there are two real good games by by Champ Games. There's like the 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 Cubert game. It's um, it's a real. There are some real gems in in here. So, but I'm I'm super proud that that's Load Runner one uh, really. Um, and, and let let me start a bit at how how Load Runner came to the uh, Atari basically is because um, I, I created like two games for the Atari 2600 and then I was looking for another game and one of the games I really loved when I was young when I was playing my uh, Commodore 64 was Load Runner. And uh, I, I tried for months to create like a kernel, uh, like like to program it on the Atari, but it, it, I, it, I didn't manage to get it done. And then basically, I, I spoke to uh, uh, John Champo on the, uh, uh, the 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 Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and he said, "Well, I can explain you how to create cartridges or games with CDFJ, which is something uh, a lot of people worked on." Like like a special type of cartridge. Um, so th th the fun thing is that basically, <laughs> that John basically uh, by explaining how to make this game, probably that's the cause why he didn't win <laughs> today. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's 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 it was a dream of of getting Load Runner to the Atari 2600, and as soon as as John basically explained me how to uh, build for CDFJ. I, I experimented with that and I could 
get the kernel kernel done and um that's when i thought okay i can probably make this game for the atari and make it make it good and make it playable um and after i had like, like the 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 raw uh plumbing done for the game i um actually uh contacted tosai games which are the the ip holders of um of of load runner um uh and and i contacted them and they uh we worked out the deal basically to get like an official license version of the game um and by the way that for people that don't know the game it, it's a game by uh douglas smith uh from the uh like the mid 80s and it was real, a uh, real popular game on, on home computers, basically. It started on the Atari uh, 800 and the, uh, the Apple II and the Commodore 64. So now it's finally on the Atari <laughs> 2600, which I'm, I'm really happy about. Uh, so thanks to, to Tozai for uh, giving me and, and Al from Atari H like a license to bring this to, uh, to the Atari 2600. A lot of thanks to to L on on getting this game like on cartridge with box printed and and all the stuff he's doing like he did some amazing work there. Uh, thanks to David Exton who created the artwork of the box, which is really 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 good. Um, I'm I'm not sure if there's someone a picture of of the game somewhere, uh, but David did like an excellent job on on getting that 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 whole load runner uh, theme. And, and the feeling in, in the artwork. Um, and, and then also thanks for like, like CDFJ, the guys who created that, that cartridge format uh, with the ARM chip. Thanks for the, the, the people who created Stella. Uh, thanks for all the beta testers uh, for the game. Like um, I think there were around 15 beta testers for Loadrunner. Uh, James and uh, Tanya were also uh, you were great like beta testers. I got fun. a lot of yeah, a lot of good feedback from everyone. Uh, some great suggestions on how to improve gameplay, um, which which uh, uh, most of the the, the feedback I, I brought back into the game, like to to have like a modern version of Load Runner. So not not having the three lives and have their three lives for that. No, I'm, this is more like. Uh, uh, you have to unlock stages and, and you can try one level as many times as you want but once you you finish it you unlock the next next uh, stage basically which makes it a lot more playable i think um yeah and 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 finally thanks to zero page homebrew like it's the show watching the show and watching you guys play games that's that's so important for uh, for game developers. Like you're seeing other people enjoying your game, you're giving some good feedback, um, always friendly feedback, uh, uh, which I really like. So um, hats off to you, basically. Thank you, <laughs> and congratulations, Dion. Another win, well deserved. Mm -hmm. Load Runner is a tour de force. It's an amazing game, and how you made it happen on the 2600 is excellent. So congratulations, Thanks. and uh, we will see you online. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we're down to the last, the last category. Wow. Oh, my God. Woo. The cats. Pretty much on time. The cats yes. are super excited. <laughs> they are. They're so excited oh. about the last category. Oh, Atari, who do you think is going to win? Who could it be? Who could it be? Well, the category is Atari 2600. He knows. He, he hears his name all show because his name's Atari. Yeah. <laughs> so he thinks we're like talking to him, I guess. Um, Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Original is the last category. Mm -hmm. And let's take a look at the nominees. Atari 2600 Homebrew Original. Fall Pit, The Maya Cave by Carmelo Cisano. Grizzards by Bruce Robert Pocock, Programming, Manual Text, In-Game Artwork, Sound Effects, and Zephyr Sauls, Art for the Manual, Label and Cover, and Music.
Oozy the Goo Slime Quest by VHZC Games. Vladimir Zuniga. Orbital War by Leandro Camera. Programming Design and Soundtrack. Hator Massiel. Programming and Consulting. Vivienne Petsiabes. Design and Text Consulting. Razor's Edge by Red Button Games. Leonardo Santiago, Design, Development, Graphics, Music, Sound Effects, Gameplay, Illustrations, Text, and Final Art. And Claudia Maria, Illustrations. Space Chaos by Steve Engelhart. Here we go, the last envelope. So, for Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Original, in third place, Razor's Edge by Red Button Games, Leonardo Santiago, Design, Development, Graphic, Music, Sound Effects, Gameplay, Illustration, Text, Final Art. He did a lot. And Claudia Maria, Illustrations. In second place, Orbital War by Leandro Camera, Programming, Design, and Soundtrack. Hator Maciel, Programming Consulting, and Vivienne Petsaibis, Design and Text Consulting. And the winner of Atari 2600 Best Homebrew Original is... Uzi the Goo Slime Quest by VHZC Games, Vladimir Zuniga. <laughs> and we have Vladimir on the line with us. Hey, welcome. Congratulations, Vladimir. Hi. Hi again. Welcome, congratulations, Vladimir, on your win. What an awesome, fun game. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, tough, tough competition in this category. Uh, every game deserved to win. Very, very good game. Uh, so I, I feel really uh, honored. Uh, again, I, I have some notes to, <laughs> to read. Uh, well, with with this game, I wanted to try something different to the platform game that I usually program, and create so some sort of homage tribute to adventure, uh, but with more puzzle and humble, really humble Metrovania touches, uh, but keeping it minimalistic. I, I like to to keep the the graphic, the 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 visual minimalistic in this, in this one, and. I have to say that I am pretty happy com, com, with how it turned out. And I'm really happy that people apparently <laughs> liked it too. Uh, this game, like all my other uh, 2600 game and a lot of uh, game in nominees this year, was was uh, writing using battery basic. Uh, so I like to say to all the people that could still have some prejudices to Atari Basic, that uh, it's an excellent language. Uh, I mean, it's, I'll, I'll, at least it's good enough to create our winning games. So <laughs> give yeah. it a chance to <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, create your own games with, with, uh, with it. So thank you very much uh, to a lot of people, uh, to Albert, for all the work and the dedication to keep the Atari home scene alive and healthy. Uh, thanks to all the test testers and, and on Atari for, Atari H forum uh, uh, for all the help and the develop process for every game I make. And once again, uh, thank you very much to you and your team for for organizing organizing this hour. Thank you so much, VHZC. Well deserved. Uh, you put in so much work into your games. They're always super, super fun to play and uh, definitely deserving of this award. Um, so congratulations thank on yet you. another win. Um, so uh, thank you so much and uh, uh, we will see you in the forums. Yeah, obviously. Okay. Bye-bye, <laughs> Vladimir. Adios.
<laughs> Adios. Oh, my goodness. We did it. We made it to the end, and you did too. Yes. Um, yeah, it went pretty smoothly, except for, you know, the earbuds didn't connect up, but we got them going. That didn't take much bad. work, really, at yeah. the end of the day. It was uh, easy for me. Yeah. Uh, just a breeze, yeah, yeah. walking in and out, reading yeah. some things. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was down to the wire, getting all this going. You know, started 15 minutes late. It was yeah. past the wire, really. It was. It was <laughs> stepped over it. It was in the distance. Yeah. The wire's gone. Um, but we made it, uh, yeah, about three hours. That's pretty that good. Actually, just under three. Yeah, because we started exactly. 15 after. Yeah. That's what yeah. I thought yeah. around that time. Um, yeah, it was uh, It was a lot of work getting this, getting this ready. Oh, my God. All those games you saw uh, for the nominees, I had to play those over the last three days and record them and edit them down. Put all the bespoke graphics all over the place. Oh my god! Yeah. So this it's, has been my world for the last. I was gonna say it's a testament. Like, getting this off the ground and all the video and everything ready oh is a god. testament to your hard work. Yeah, wrangling all the people I know that I need to talk to. Better than anyone, how much he has been working on this over the last few <laughs> she days. Hasn't, she hasn't seen me. I come me. home and he's in his office, and yeah. I go to bed and he's he's in his office. <laughs> Are you still I'll, alive I'll in there? I'll knock on the door and shove food, you know, in the room, <laughs> and then take the dirty plates out. But Under it's the door. Been a lot of work. <laughs> So yeah, empty um, plate. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's. But I uh, I think uh, this might be one of the best years it, it, with, yes. with the most minimal issues. So Super five smooth. years in, we're almost there. Thank you, Gio. And thank and you to Gio. Gio. Come up, yes. come up, yeah, Gio. Gio. Come and say hi. But it looks so short. Oh there no, go. just uh, go just on don't tiptoes. stand next to next to Darcy. Yes. There you go. Come on here. in. Come on over this side here. There, there we go. go. Yeah, thank you so much, Gio. Yeah. She was on the switching board. Yeah. Uh, chatting with all the winners, getting them ready, putting them on video. She did a great job. Mm -hmm. uh, went super <laughs> smooth. So thank yeah. you so much, Gio. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and of course to Darcy as well yeah. and Tanya for helping helping me out and mm -hmm. announcing. I the was names. very helpful. I enjoy I enjoy doing all the voice work. Oh yes! You did a great I, job I, with the voice I, I have to right. say, really it's good. the fifth year, and um, I, I feel like I could start a second career. I, I might need That's a little right. bit of practice. Voiceover, <laughs> voiceover is really fun. And uh, we had somebody help with the pronunciation of the Polish names this year. I can't remember their name, I, but thank you to you. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> so that helped a lot, and we'll, we'll have be to doing put that thanks going to that forward. We'll have person at the next show because I know you yes. don't have their name, but um, not on me. Yeah. I, and I, I still apologize. I'm sure I didn't get all of them perfect. No, um, unless. No. They, the Polish people well, said there you did great. Uh, Viviani, Petsaibis. Oh, uh, yeah. I didn't know it was Viviani, so I apologize, Viviani. But um, uh, yeah, uh, you, you're going to miss one along the way, but uh, That's true. Yeah. Um, we do our best here. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> they pronounced everyone's name but their own. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, thank you for tuning in. It's been a lot of fun. So um, much fun. We're gonna, and, and thank you to all the uh, nominees, everyone who made a game in 2022, yeah. started a game in 2022. It's an accomplishment to even work on a game, let alone finish it, let alone be nominated, let alone win. Mm -hmm. uh, Gio and I work in the film industry and we know being nominated is, is a huge, huge thing. Yeah. And finishing a film is a huge, huge thing. So finishing a finishing game, a game <laughs> is just as big. So you should uh, congratulate yourself if you've worked on a game this year. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't, why not make one next year? Yeah. Um, and so Zero Page Homebrew is going to take a little break because I need to recuperate from this as per usual. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be doing some programming myself coming up for the 2600. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and so we'll be back. We'll be doing like after darks and stuff here and there, but not like regular shows. Mm -hmm. We'll be doing very sporadic shows. Um, but I can't wait to get back and playing all the new games that I missed doing all the homebrew awards because we had to take like a week and a half, two weeks off and, mm -hmm. or even more and we've got a big backlog of games now. So uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it's been uh, a lot of fun. James Game is winning all the awards next year. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'd enter it. Uh, I think that'd be too sketchy if I actually got nominated. It's like, well, of course you got nominated. You run the thing. <laughs> so, yeah. I, I just, yeah, I won't. <laughs> but I'll try and make one. We'll, we'll give you um, a, a, a participation a lifetime ribbon achievement award for completing one because he's been talking about it for the last five years. That's so true. <laughs> yeah, I do have a binder like full of like forty different ideas for games. Yeah, yeah. So I have no I've lack of ideas. 
tons of great ideas, I think. <laughs> um, honorary award. Yeah, go. honorary award for making a game. Uh, so thanks for hanging out with us today and celebrating all the games that people made and all the winners. Congratulations to all the winners. We'll be sending your trophies and your certificates and those little red envelopes to you in the mail soon enough. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. So have a great and safe Saturday slash Sunday if you're on Australia. And uh, yeah, try not to get uh, lost in the snow and stay safe. And, uh, and we will uh, see you soon. So thanks for hanging out with us. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Go to the pre-show. Okay. Bye. Bye. Keep saying bye. Extended bye. bye.